gather around freaks it's wednesday night for some reason and we're here and we're getting down to it because you know what time of the year it is it's my birthday time of the year did you know it it is and uh we're talking wrestle movies and gather around freaks uh it's hey did you see this one Gather round, freaks, because it's that time of year again. The time of year that one of your hosts subjects you to something guaranteed to bend your mind, body, and soul. It is with great pleasure that we extend to you an invitation to delve into the realms of extreme sports and theatrical magnificence. Prepare yourselves for an experience like no other. As hey, did you see this one? And Jason R. Phillips proudly presents Wrestling with Mortality. I can't. Well, when did you put that on? <laughs> I can't do this. It's, it's like a magic hot. trick. It's too hot in this lucha mask. It's too hot. It's too hot in this luchador mask. Ugh. If he's got a second one under the yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> the weekly roundtable discussion uh, about uh, movies, the review podcast thing, uh, the world's longest hangout with your best buds. Uh, it's me, Jason R. Phillips, with my co-host, as always, Stephen Cube Waters. That's me, Stephen uh, Cube Waters. This is episode <laughs> one hundred and streets. <laughs> episode one hundred and thirty-two of Hey, did you see this one? Um, our guest this week is having technical issues. We're gonna try to uh, see if he can get on and get connected, uh, but we're gonna soldier on for now, I think. Um, <laughs> And who is our guest, Jason? <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, yep. Please welcome to the show this week, first time guest, uh, Sam Gladstone. Sam, how are you doing, buddy? I'm here. I'm queer. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam is, of course, the host, one of the hosts of the Is It Camp podcast, uh, which is perfect for the movie that we're doing this week. Uh, called Santos y Blue Demon versus Dracula El Hombre Lobo, also known as Santos and Blue Demon versus Dracula and Wolfman. Uh, this is episode 132, as I mentioned. And uh, we uh, last week we hit the bottom of the barrel, and we this week we've climbed a few rungs up to the top of the ladder, brother. And this is so fucking ridiculous. Ugh. It seems to really be restricting your uh, ability to speak. Third uh, yeah, no, yeah. no, he's he's not that committed. How do wrestlers <laughs> wrestle a whole match? I mean, they probably have masks that fit their head. It seems like you really shoved your head inside that small mask. I did. Also, it smelled terrible in there. I uh, I lent this to a, a wrestler. Uh, me and Sam go way back. We were both trainers trainees at uh, Super Kicked Studios. I believe Sam is still training to this very day, many years yes. later, getting jacked yes, up like a like a jacked freak. Uh, and we used yeah, to you, do shows. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say you 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 thought that Zac Efron looked pretty juicy. Yeah, 
you're gonna you're gonna be showing up in Baywatch too, and you're gonna play all the characters at the same time. Um, yeah. but that mask, that second mask I had on, actually got used as the jobber mask when we would do like away shows. So mm. a lot of a lot of boys have worn that mask over the years, and by golly, it it smelled like it in there. Um, if I seem a little caught off guard, it's just because Sam was having some technical issues and I, I, I didn't want to use the best juice, but I'm here, I'm ready. And, uh, Steve doesn't like it when I say words like juice, of course. Um, that's true. <laughs> There's other words I don't like when you say, but juice is fine. Okay. Uh, so Steve, can, once again, Sam Gladstone, can you give him a little round of applause, please? Welcome to the show clapping happening now there oh, you go. sound effects yeah we have sound effects i broke these headphones just now doing all that stupid nonsense that's fucking fantastic uh it's time for a new headset anyway um we do normally do like a a weekly uh fan guessing game to sort of have people guess what the movie's going to be for that week but last week and this week i kind of forwent forwent is that the word I forgo. didn't do it. I forgo. <laughs> I forgoed it um, because the movies are so obscure that it's like I don't want to feel the sense of uh, you know neglect and uh, what's it called when you're pushed away by people? Neglect. You know, yeah. <laughs> okay, works. Works. yeah. I didn't want to feel that neglect. <laughs> Uh, rejection rejection thank you that was the word i was looking for i don't want to feel that sense of rejection putting up a poster for a movie uh that nobody's seen and this falls into that realm um, i mean it has two pretty recognizable characters on it and it's not the main characters it's dracula and the wolfman and the wolfman now i hope that we can talk about whether or not the license were licenses were procured for these films but these are uh, both Oh, uh, they're public uh, domain guys. They're both public domain. That's why you can just throw Dracula into anything, basically. No one owns Dracula. That, that's why, that's why like, uh, there was that episode of Buffy in season six, the very first or second episode. Somebody was like, we need Buffy to fight somebody like really menacing, like a Dracula type. And somebody in the writer's room was just like, like Dracula? Dracula? <laughs> yeah. You can just use <laughs> Dracula. Turns out you can just do that. And so yeah. that's why like Marvel has Dracula and DC has Dracula and Buffy. Are, you can just, yeah. you, you can have Dracula fight Steamboat Willie now. And it's the Scooby-Doo yeah. gang. The in Scooby-Doo three, gang has taken out Dracula. In a triple yeah. threat match with, uh, with old Winnie the Pooh and soon a I'm bunch of sure Batman there. fought Dracula at one point in the cartoon world. Yes, he did. Uh, <laughs> there are certain stipulations, however, uh, the universal monsters are all copywritten, meaning that if you're going to do a Frankenstein, you're going to do a Wolfman, you do have to take certain steps to make sure that you're not replicating the look and style of those uh, characters yeah. within those those uni- within those films. But this movie seems to have somehow towed the line because they really sort of went with that. Wolfman class. looks pretty iconically Wolfman and Dracula. They just put huge sideburns on him to circumvent that, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I noticed this giant sideburns, too. It's like, whoa. <laughs> Dracula's got drip at the moment. He also had like a plaid lining to his cloak, which I was very into. I was like, oh, that's probably a pretty warm cloak. We'll get to that. <laughs> Cozy. We'll get to that. We still have some rigmarole to get to before we get to uh, to get to all that. Um, quickly, I'd like to do my regular call to action. If you, um, Sam, I'll have you plug your stuff at the end of the show. But I just want to yeah. tell everybody that right now for free. On the internet, it's a little thing you've probably heard of. You might be on it right now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You might be watching this later from a hard drive. Who knows? Probably not. But you can find all of our socials, uh, all of our shows and all of our socials at Hey, Did You See This One? Pretty much across the internet. Um, We're on Spotify and YouTube primarily for our uh, video on demand, audio on demand. We go live every Thursday, typically, uh, on Twitch at 8 p.m. Eastern. And also in the intro 10-minute bit um you the music that's playing is white bat audio they're dms he's a dmca uh music producer who makes music for podcasts and and youtube videos and stuff i give him a shout out because we do use him pretty much every week um but yeah with that why don't we talk about our brief history with the film santos e blue demon versus dracula (laughs) 
I'm fun. I'm loose. I'm over time. I didn't know how long you're going to go with that. So I just pressed play. All right. Yeah. No, that's that's good, good timing. Um, just like, uh, just like most shows, uh, around here, it's a time honor tradition to give our guests the first opportunity to give their brief history. So Sam, why don't you tell us about your long, illustrious storied history with the film Santos Blue Demon versus Dracula Wolfman? I watched it this week. Mm. <laughs> that's that's, that's i mean I, I i like we we know of santos and the blue demon like is a sort of cultural thing it's it's not in, like in the zeitgeist zeitgeist but because i am a pop culture well of knowledge it's just one of those things that i'm like ah yes two famous masked wrestlers in mexico they did a shit ton of movies and fought all kinds of people i'm sure from drug lords to vampires and wolfmen right and she wolves and frankenstein and, frankenstein and, and cyclopses and yeah yeah it's they, so, have, a, they have a lot of movies when we get a to lot director, of I movies wanna, i want to discuss what where in the santa at the ssu the santa shared universe this is in but uh since these since Last week and this week, it's been kind of short because we all just watched these movies the day, pretty much the day of. Um, who's your favorite wrestler, Sam? Of these two or my wrestlers in general? So I mentioned that, you know, Austin Rock era is kind of my era, but, you know, I like CM Punk is my guy. Steve likes, you know, Rey Mysterio, Sting. Um, mm -hmm. Steve's not a huge wrestling fan, but. He's, he's coming around slowly over time. Um, who's your who's your guy or gal or them? My my go to person that I'm just like I just love watching him work is Big Van Vader. Vader, that's a good choice. Vader's great. Uh, I, Wait, I, Vader I, I, went, I didn't know he was. No, <laughs> no. Well, I mean the weird shared universe that wrestling is technically the Muppets and Chucky and RoboCop are also part True. of wrestling. All yeah. good, all good characters, all, all great characters. Um, but big van Vader is he's huge. He's no joke. He's like 400 pounds. He's like six foot four, three or four, something stupid. And this guy was massive and so he did big guy moves right you know you pick somebody up you slam them around you know do all that kind of stuff but uh one of the things that, that vader had going for him was that he also could do a moonsault that's big man vader that's vader Fucking right there he, just oh. massive Wasn't and a moonsault he meets world he yeah. was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> twice I he, and he was he even simply his dad and he's like he's like a former student of Mr. Feeney. Like Mr. Feeney comes out and he's like Vader. <laughs> yeah, he's Ethan Soupley's dad, like the bully's dad. And yeah. yeah, it's great. Weird that I remember that. But it's he's great because like he does all these big guy moves, and you think like, okay, that's his whole shtick. He does big guy moves. But then you see him like climb up to the second rope and do a backflip, and you're just like, four hundred pounds should not do that. Yeah. And there's also a very famous match of it hit with him and Stan Hansen in Japan, where three minutes into this 20 minute match, uh, Stan Hansen hit him so hard in the face, his eyeball popped out of his socket yep. and you can actually watch him like force it back into his skull and just do the rest of the match. Sure can. Big thing. He's dope as fuck. Uh, and uh, he, he never really caught on as big in the States because uh, all kinds of other stuff happening, but he was no joke, huge in Japan, like literally huge in Japan. They, they worshiped this guy. And so I just he love watching. The, he held the WWF championship briefly, briefly. And he, in WCW, I think he was like a legendary, like United States champion or something. He held like a secondary belt for a long time. Here's a picture of him. Uh, mid moonsault just to give you a picture that dude sam is correct for like over 400 pounds just murdering macho man randy savage while rick flair looks on all right so cool. so cool that's a really fucking good answer uh thank you you kind of got vader vader colors on right now you got the same traps as him yeah yeah it's um, kind of a side effect of just being big <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
Awesome. Um, Steve, uh, what's your brief history with, uh, with old blue demon? I watched it today. Um, yeah, I have absolutely no history with this, but, um, I am familiar with this, um, movie series tangentially through the likes of people like Guillermo del Toro and their works, which we can get into during director talk, I think, because I'm not going to have a lot to say about this director. So I'll talk about another one. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I should say though, that story about Vader having his eyeball popped out. I do a VO for a wrestling channel and I had to read all about that into a microphone and I was yeah. like, this is disgusting. Yeah. And I didn't know it was the boy meets world Vader. Last week we introduced you to uh, Abdul the butcher this mm -hmm. week you get that Vader story. So, well, I mean, I already knew about it because I read it all. <laughs> I right, had to read yeah. all of it into a microphone. That's um, good wrestle things, Steve. I'm going to make you a wrestling fan uh, from this month, whether you like it or not. I don't know why you always think that I don't like wrestling. I just don't know everything about wrestling. Like, that just you. sounds like somebody who doesn't like wrestling. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> all right. um, for me, I also watched it this week. Um, I didn't pull them out because they're kind of buried away, but I have two DVDs that this movie may be on, but I went to look for them to see if I could like watch this on DVD. And I'm pretty sure they're, they don't have dubs. They're in Spanish and uh, the cellophane wrap was still on them. And I'm a weirdo for stuff. And I'm like, I don't want to unwrap that. It will be worth something someday. Um, and then also uh, I got it from them from the CNE. You know how there's a you go to the CNE and you go to that room where there's just like endless rows of DVDs and CDs and stuff. Yeah. No. No. Have you ever been it's, to the CNE? I've been like once. Oh, okay. Yeah, but even still, go. like there's a room, there's a dark room, and it goes <laughs> on for a while. It kind of does. It's like a liminal space where you can buy DVDs like seventy five for four dollars. Um just liquidation sales and i got them there and i was like yeah these are gonna be dope and then when this came around this was kind of the reason i chose this movie and i looked at them and i was like i'll just see if the internet has it and lo and behold it's just on youtube so that, that's pretty much really good quality too it, mm -hmm. yeah it looked a little bit like the one that so the one that you downloaded, Steve, went down, and Sam found it again. And the one that we watched looked like it had been touched up with AI or something. Did you notice that, Sam? In the background, sometimes their heads would be weird, like too or smooth. <laughs> no, but I mean that kind of stuff. They do it all the time, right? Like yeah. it's um, it's not it's not um, touch with AI. It's a they're trying to upscale it to hd for a very inferior quality so the okay. computer just goes like i guess i guess so okay um cool they have good good talk on the brief history front now let's do a little bit of director talk all right all right quiet on set are we rolling okay let's shoot this piece of shit. sound speed Action! If ever there was a perfect time to use that exact sound clip, it was last movie, week. <laughs> well, the last week was a shitty mockumentary. This absolutely felt like some director was like, "Ugh, okay, whatever." I guess they're over a, a pit of spikes now, and the little girl has to walk across the pit of spikes. Just, just do it. Um, but the director of this movie is Miguel M. Delgado, and he actually has 140 credits. Yeah, and 75 wow. of them are Santo movies. <laughs> it's crazy. I wasn't he, it, so he's like the guy for these movies then. I mean, I don't know if he has 75, but if 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 the internet is to be believed, this is the 37th Santo movie, which precedes 16 others after it. So it's like not even the tail end or the beginning. It's like two thirds of the way through. Cause there were ref like there were references to other things in this movie. I felt like sometimes like uh, we've met to the mob boss. He's like, yeah, we've met before. And the mob boss is like, what? Cause I was like, what? Probably. Well, yeah. yeah there was also the part where he gave him like, Oh, I've still got that radio watch you gave me. Ah, yeah. good thing <laughs> you have the radio watch. It's like a eh, big, big deal we've all got he's, reason to watch this now he's a real james bond you know like it's i almost wanted to liken him to batman but he, he's more like james bond than he is like batman i think 
I think the reason my brain was going Batman is because it feels so campy just in looks the vein like Batman. of like the sixties Batman television show, mm-hmm. but yeah. it, it, it is more like he's the man they go to when they have some sort of crazy thing happening. They're like, Oh no, the monsters have returned. We need to get Santo Santo. Can you do this alone? No, I need my friend, the blue demon. <laughs> Let's get him. He's the best of the best other than me. Um, but yeah, so- like, let's go ahead. I was just going to say, so like this guy ha- just has a wealth of director credits. Uh, I don't think he goes over a seven on any of these. Oh, okay. It's very, it's very low numbers for, for the IMDb stars. It's, it seems all very like sixties uh, and seventies, like serial serials and movies and stuff that probably didn't make a lot of money, but it feels like Mexico in the sixties and seventies kind of had a Bollywood vibe where they were just churning stuff out that yeah there are there are years where he makes four four to five movies in one year which the reason i say that is because like it the the, maybe tv wasn't really there yet at that time but movies were so you went to the theater to like watch your tv filming five movies at the same time all right we, we got this guy for a year let's make four movies in this year and we'll, well just you film got, them all at the same time. You got to think as well that like Santo and Blue Demon, they're legitimate wrestlers, right? Yeah. So people all over Mexico would have been like, I would love to see a Santo match, but it's all the way in Merida and I'm here in Mexico City and that's hours away. But there's a movie on at the theater so I can go watch the, the yeah. next best thing. He's right? fighting so. Frankenstein's daughter. Let's go. Why not? Yeah. But also this- there's a drug dealer in it too. Drugs are bad. <laughs> This movie has that thing done much better than the kayfabe movie had where there's just like kind of full matches and I, there's different rules in Lucha. Um, and I think most matches are like best two to three falls, if I'm not mistaken in Lucha in like Lucha. Like if you go to CMLL or triple a, uh, you're going to get a lot more. I know the tag matches have like these insane rules that like you have to like be a, a huge super fan to really understand what's going on and get it. It's That's not like you're, bad. It's not like here in North America where it's like one fall to a finish. The rules are simple. Don't use a weapon and three count is the end of the match, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Lucha has a lot of really complex rules. And I I thought that was interesting because in this movie, we get get a a couple of tropes in the three matches. The first one is like, you you know, a fall for each and then a tiebreaker. The second match is like Blue Demon just destroys him in two. And then there's a tag team best of three or something at the end we'll talk about that but it, it was just interesting to see these matches and they're short they're 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 palatable and they're filmed well you know the mexican style of wrestling is different but it was fun to watch unlike last week when it was bullshit indie garbage just filmed with a loose plot jammed around it go watch our episode last week we destroy that movie i hope the it's such a small director in film that i hope that they reach out to me and give me what for because then i'll promote that i uh, love getting okay. shit on by people come shit on me. <laughs> come shit on me anything for views as eric bischoff would say controversy creates cat dweller I so because i don't really have <laughs> Because I don't have too much experience with this director, uh, because I was not born in Mexico in the 60s, <laughs> uh, I, d- I did immediately recognize like, oh, this is what um, Guillermo del Toro is referencing in his television show, The Strain, which is based on a book that or a series of books that he wrote with his co-writer, whose name is escaping me at the moment. Um, the Strain is a show about vampires. And uh, they have this character called, I think his name is the Silver Angel, um, who is definitely inspired by Santo, for sure. Uh, oh, yeah. he, wears a, he wears a silver mask, he, and, but he's an actor <clears throat> who he was famous in the 60s and 70s as a luchador who was also in tons and tons of movies. And it kind of clips back to him fighting zombies and stuff and vampires and Dracula in these movies. And uh, so it's quite obvious that, you know, Guillermo del Toro, born in Mexico, is a Mexican filmmaker, uh, and he loves creepy, weird stuff. It is absolutely in no way uh, a far cry to think that he loved this shit when he was a kid, <laughs> you know, like watching Santos and the Blue Demon versus Dracula and the Wolfman, and then writes 
like a hard spooky adult uh fairy tale utilizing those characters not by name but by influence you know and it's kind of fun it's the best character in the show in my opinion and uh now i know where it came from it came i from need that. to watch the strain i hear it's pretty good as somebody who likes that kind of stuff and i didn't realize it was i feel like i've been told repeatedly that it is guillermo del toro and i'm just like okay whatever and then well, i forget about it he, i think he directed he's, the first episode and, and wrote he's a bunch like of the it, yeah. executive producer and yeah. stuff. okay but it probably has that like his dna all over it it's got I mean, it's filmed in toronto as well so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's good until it's not, and then it sucks. But that's just kind of how a lot of TV shows that think they're going to get canceled every season are because they're like, we have to end it, but also maybe have enough that we might come back again. Yeah. So it's it never really kind of feels completed, and uh, it gets annoying after a while. I'm like, I don't care about any of this anymore. Speaking of, this movie just feels like a moment in their career. The ending is fucking stupid. <laughs> The it just like they're just on one of their various 60s Batman adventures. It feels like there's a lot of just like directorially in this film, there's a lot of just people walking around. Did you guys <laughs> yeah. notice that? I have somehow have two pages of notes to go through. We're gonna kind of hit the plot points, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of just like people being like, Oh, I'm gonna go over here now, or I'm gonna walk over here. And that felt like an interesting choice because there's so much you could do with these characters, but it's almost like, oh, we're 30 of these in, and there's obviously going to be multiple sequels. We don't really have to put all of our chest into it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I also noticed that there were just these large chunks of the movie where Santos and Blue Demon weren't there. Like, it was very clearly like, ah, and now let's check in on the women. And you have to watch the women do things. And they're all in peril and they're trying to solve things. And then Santos and Blue Demon are just like, ah, oh, oh, we're here to punch now. <laughs> and also the some of the dialogue like was probably bad in Spanish. But then when you tra have somebody doing the translated version, it sounds like a Tommy Wiseau line, you know, like. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's so many oh, good ones. <clears throat> the, like the uh, I will get on that yeah. <laughs> right away. My uncle needs to speak to you about something interesting and strange. Like, what? Oh, hi there. How are you oh, doing? And I'm just strange. A, I'm just about to eat dinner. How, how would you do today? Oh, great. Fine. Good. And uh, just before I move on to the body of the episode, I just want to I want to ask you guys, do you think the voice actors were Spanish or do you think it was yes. white people? <laughs> no, it was not us? white people. Okay. <laughs> I was trying That's to figure out... I was is trying to figure out the same thing. I was like, yeah. is this racist? <laughs> no. I, I made sure that it was, it wasn't, but it, that was one of the things that I was like, Oh, it's nice that they actually got, you know, people who are Mexican to do it. It's probably easier as well to find actual actors that speak the language to, to aid in the translation. Yeah. Was Santos, uh, was Santo, was English Santo also Santo? I don't know. I didn't, okay. I didn't dig that deep. I don't, the, you know, you hit, you hit bedrock pretty quick when you try to dig down on a. I they there's no Wikipedia page. <laughs> it no. just doesn't exist. No, but no, I mean, no. you can find the series if you want to call it that, because there are enough of these movies that it could be a television series. I thought that James Bond had a lot of sequels, but dear God, <laughs> um, this that's, that's yeah, Santo. They don't have individual pages because there's not. I, I guarantee you they they filmed way too many of those for. for of them for them to be able to differentiate between the movies when it came to doing research. It's like, I don't, we don't know. <laughs> they filmed you, all of them at the you, same time. You may actually have to literally go over to like Spanish speaking Wikipedia. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I know there's been a, the odd time where I'm like, I know this thing exists. And then I like click over to French. And it's like, Oh, there it is. Oh, it's French. all there. Maybe we go to Canadian Wikipedia to find out about the, that cafe movie. From oh yeah. Week. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, eh? uh, oh. there might be a literal library in Mexico City that is just the library of Santa where you can rent all these movies out and there's there's books and text all about it. Uh, but Santa on the front. Yeah, exactly. And he's just like, <laughs> yeah, no, body it's like slamming, the, the York body York slamming. library with the lions, except it's him and the blue team. In it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like lions. Actually, I like that more. <laughs> 
I believe um, there was a wrestler in Lucha Underground called Blue Blue Demon Jr. who had a crazy casket match, and I think that it might have been based off of. I don't think he's literally a son, but I think he he had this like crazy casket match on one of the episodes of Lucha Underground. For those of you that don't know, Lucha Underground was this show that ran on uh, what's the what's the Spanish station that's kind of like NBC where they Telemundo, the Telemundo, where it was like wrestling, like WWE style wrestling, or in, like an indie, but it had this like crazy story around it with like oh yeah there were wizards talismans they had to collect in order to put them together in order to challenge the person with the belt that's the only way you could do it which is cool and then notably it was uh it, it was produced by like mark burnett who does all the reality shit like survivor and that so it had really high production value and it was awesome and i do plan on going back and watching it one day but the they blue demon blue demon jr was like this crazy hardcore dude and like a heavy for like the main guy, uh, Dario Cuerto, who's a character actor that you've definitely seen in things. Um, but he's like the Vince McMahon and he's always like scheming and he brings out these like crazy, like monster characters to fight the, the underdogs basically. And it had, it had like Lucha vibes. Um, it's also a bit super Sentai and like, here is my monster of the week. Exactly. And I remember this hardcore casket match where the casket just got obliterated. So (laughs) anyway, that's just a little side note. So when we were going into this, I was like, wait, is this guy still wrestling? But it's almost impossible that is because these dudes look like they're 40 or 50 in this movie. So anyway, um, why don't we just get right to the body of the episode? Because uh, let's stop edging uh, the body. The body of the episode. Rules are simple. Talk about it. Uh, this is the, <laughs> the bulk of the episode. Uh, a lot of people give us a lot of shit for going super long, but if you really want to just listen to the podcast, we're in it now. We're here. Um, I usually go beat by beat through the story, uh, but we feel free to tangent, uh, meander, and all, all of that sort of stuff. What the fuck is that sound? Is the Undertaker coming through the? Oh no! Silly, the into a ghost. On, my, on my fog machine. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> what? I didn't mean to hit that button. That's oh, crazy. I, I thought it was like an in effect thing on your your screen that you're just like, oh, going <laughs> ghost mode. I have a I have a fog machine in my room. He's a pervert. See. Yeah. He always calls me a twisted pervert, but <laughs> this <laughs> this week, you sir are the twisted pervert. We need a uh, we need a sound bite for that. Mm. Twisted pervert of the week. It's usually me. <laughs> yeah, that's the twisted pervert sound. Yeah. Uh, Is it like a celebration thing for you? Like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just laying there going. What the Fuck, it just happened. I know it has lights on it. Uh so I use the light for that helps. Hands. Yeah. I I meant to hit the light button, but I hit the fog button instead. Okay. So here we are. That's the story. For people listening to this on audio only, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> don't worry nobody listens to this um so immediately a fantastic piano music over black and white credits you know how i uh usually don't like that but uh it was a pretty interesting little opening it's it was all in spanish of course but um we immediately after that get to a uh wrestling match which the announcers just sort of call as a two out of three match. It's pretty good. There's not much to really say about that. I would say it's it's yeah, shot it's, nicely. It's, yeah, I mean it's like one hard cam looking at the match the whole time. Like there's no dynamic camera action or angles. You don't see it the ring from up high. It's literally just like here is a ring. But I, I will fight. say, like after watching last week's episode, um, the kayfabe. There was absolutely no artistry in that movie whatsoever. It was like people, they're like, oh, we can buy cameras for dirt cheap. Let's make a movie. Whereas this, you know, there's some stage presentation. It the felt col- like it was colors, a stage. The colors. Know? Well, that that's, was the, that was meant to be the illusion, right? You have the sound of the crowd, but you've got this really 
nice calming blue background with lights coming from the bottom and it has a nice texture to it but it doesn't draw attention away from the wrestlers so your eye is focused on them i think like the shot composition though it was really simple it was really nice and i liked it and i didn't feel like i wanted to skip it in the same way that i did with kfab where i wanted to skip every single second of it i was like how much can i scrub through this before it starts affecting the story in my head um yeah i other than that i, I don't think there's much you can say about it um no the yeah, i don't know the choreography was fine wrestling was oh, the different. sound effects are hilarious but that's I what i was going to mention the fully the the actual punch sound that goes was in this movie a bunch well <laughs> all, all the sound effects in this movie are the same things that you can find stock for free now like they're all open source stuff that you can just get um I don't know if that's part of the original cut or the original dub, or if that's something that is more recent, but it's very funny when you know the sound effects as well as like anybody who's ever used sound effects and something, you're gonna be like, I know what the name of that one is. Oh, that's flop punch. That's that's grunt. <laughs> Cause yeah. every once in a while, you'll hear the real audio from the movie. Like the part when he's coughing from the smoke bomb, the, the VO actor does some like, <laughs> and it's really clear. And then it cuts to like, the on stage like, <laughs> and it sounds com completely different um there's a few moments like that and they, they made me giggle but yeah the sound effects in this are goofy as heck yeah it feels all it's got that it's i was like oh this is just it's like 60s batman but in movie form like i, I haven't really seen the 60s batman movie but it just kind of looked like the show right i mean having having just done an episode of my podcast on the 60s batman a couple weeks ago uh yeah this had big 60s bat like even the the fight scene with the mob later on in the film is is like okay we're gonna set the angle slightly high point it down so we can see all the action happening at once this but was missing uh dutch dutch angles though there weren't i don't think there were any that i noticed well the joker wasn't there so that's yeah. right wild. yeah there was no twist there was no one twisted enough to have a twisted <laughs> camera angle jason <laughs> yeah yeah they're pretty straightforward it's a dracula and a wolf man a dracula <laughs> yeah. uh, the the thing that i kind of noticed that's interesting about the fight scenes in this though is for being people guys who traditionally are in a choreographed wrestling setting and look good in their wrestling matches Not choreographed they're just fighting people they're what just you mean choreographed look i broke kayfabe for everybody last week when i revealed the truth but in this when they're fighting people just like in a street setting like in a fight scene in a movie it they just the guys are throwing like real punches and then they're throwing like axe handles and it just the fight styles don't mesh that well i thought um but that said, this this opening sequence was great. Uh, Blank uh, Santo gets the first win. Blanco gets the second fall, and then we cut to some guy trying to resurrect <laughs> the Dracula. Oh yeah, the hunchback. It's so yeah. cool because not only is he like trying to resurrect Dracula, but he's in this like cave that's got a wolf head and a, a, a bat head, and both of them flamethrowers built into them so they're just going off in the background like yeah and anytime there's a, anytime there's a, a close-up of the the flamethrower coming out of the mouth, mouth there's a very fun musical <laughs> musical sting that's like da -da 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 -da. and then but it, it won't wait for the other flamethrower to finish before the next one starts and the musical sting starts again cutting off the other musical sting so they don't overlap it's such funny editing that i'm like it's got to be deliberate or it's accidental, but I don't know. But either way, it's funny. And if they did it on purpose, it's funny. And if they didn't, it's equally as funny. Um, I'm I'm glad you brought that up because like the music all throughout this movie just kind of comes and goes as it pleases almost. <laughs> yeah. There's no scene where like the music fades into the next scene. It's always a hard cut where the music and everything cuts and it's just like silence and someone's walking into a room or there's people about to have a conversation. Well, you got to think that the, the guy doing the music also had to do four more movies that year. So yeah, he's not going to just blow his load on this one. Yeah. And then on top of that, we're, we, we watched a dubbed version with a bad dub. So who knows what audio mixing was fucked up by the dubbing, you know, it didn't, cause it didn't feel like it was just a track, an audio track blasted over the movie. The It all kind of was mixed, but it almost to its detriment a lot of the time. 
I because know, of I that. Okay. I think I think it made it better. <laughs> it even, like I, I'm kind of on Steve's side about the movie is meant to be just like like well, it's a comedy, it, but played like almost like a Leslie Nielsen kind of level. I mean, this played straight, thing, but this type of thing in terms of audio cuts like that that we're talking about deliberately for this um, is emulated to this day in movies like uh kill bill or uh once upon a time in hollywood quentin tarantino borrows this type of editing technique because for comedic effect but it also works as like a cool factor for his movies as well so it's it's so strange to see it have a completely different impact depending on what you're trying to do right um i'm trying to think of a good example from uh the last tarantino movie but he he does it because i mean he, his his style of filmmaking is very much like old school in the new school right well, I mean the it's, the whole kill, kill Bill every time she sees like O Ren and that it just it cuts right in and then it cuts from right Iron off. Side. Yeah, yeah, and that's it, right? Like the, there's no overlap. It, whatever's happening in the background, fuck that shit. I'm about to do yeah. an Iron Side now. <laughs> and the shaky like zoom in on the person that the Kill Bill movies actually all Tarantino movies do it. Yeah, I I think those are from old uh, old westerns more so than this. And uh, you know, if there was more artistry in the camera work in this, that those zoom ins probably happen. There's probably like even though there's like. 70 of these there's probably a few that are higher budget and with more um like better direction and better like filmmaking i feel like we popped it on one that was like oh the new the weekly santo movie's out do you guys want to go it's like oh but like at what point do you think that that is the case do you think it's before this or after this after well the one before this this 1969 one he nice. fought all of the monsters it's called yeah. like Santa versus, versus the monster versus the monsters. And on the I, poster, it's like all of them. I started watching that one. Cause like we said, we couldn't find that. And I was like, wait a second. I'm pretty sure this is Dracula and Wolfman, not Dracula and Wolfman and Frankenstein and Cyclops and a <laughs> lady vampire. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, the thing is, is like, you can say, cause it's the 37th movie, right? Out of 70 or whatever. Uh, it's, it seems to me that the the budget would be higher maybe before this, not necessarily after or during, right? Because okay. If you're if you're on the forty fifth movie of the Santos series, you're not going to give it the same budget. I that would you think would for the second one, if the first one did well. <laughs> you know, like think about the Fast and the Furious movies. They don't I, I really think... get better quality. It kind of like flops. Maybe here, maybe. Here maybe... Yeah, I, I would think maybe like the first couple were pretty good and then they got better. And then after a while, like Godzilla does the, did the same thing. Most slashers, right? That first one's the experiment. And then it's like, oh, people want to see this. Uh, money, 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 money. And, right? and it quality goes up. Yeah. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, we can just let it slide. Kids will come see this regardless, which is why there's True. 70. We did the fifth. There's only one way to find out. We have to watch we every have to watch all. Of this is now a Santos podcast, <laughs> Santos cast. But it's also like we just did the fifth iteration of Chucky, Freddy, Mike Myers, and uh, Jason. And three of those movies were like unwatchable <laughs> garbage. And Chucky, since there was such a massive. Chucky's always now, good. Chucky's, Chucky's amazing. Good. Like he's it's. A, he's a, Above and beyond, it is like Scream and Chucky are the two slasher franchises that are just like, oh, all these entries are great. Eh, except yeah, for number three with Chucky. Friday the th Chucky three is kind of garbage, but like Friday yeah. the 13th, four and five were both just like, uh, and, and goddamn Halloween seems to be getting worse by the, by the entry. I, Freddy Krueger, oh. I kind of just, I think that every time they, come up with a really fantastic kill in the freddy krueger movies it's good that said this um movie has a lot of problems <laughs> but at least eric who we find out later his name is just eric the hunchback uh he yells satan make your will fulfilled which i thought was great uh and i was curious about why they buried dracula and the wolfman next to each other it seems like a bad they're idea. best friends <laughs> best best buds no this and, is this uh, is this is a ratio of queer romance guys just because the two guys were in a grave together they're not good friends they could have been lovers too 
No, they were just roommates. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I ship Dracula and uh, Rufus. What was his name? Rufus Rex. Oh, oh my! Wait, wait until we, when we talk about that. I, I've got like so much to say about that. I love awesome. that shit. <laughs> so we move over to a uh, family um, for a minute, just to introduce the them really quickly. Show. Yeah, we don't really know who they are yet. They live in a mansion. Then, after all that, it cuts back to the third fall of the th- best three of falls match. This has all happened within probably ten minutes, five minutes. We gotta maybe. get that expository dialogue out of, the, out of the way. We gotta learn about the book of what was it uh, Kabbalah, which yeah, I've heard about in other things, but I believe it's real. I think it has to do with like Jewish mysticism, or it might actually be a book in like actual Jewish uh, religion. But every yeah. time I've heard it, it's in a demon movie. <laughs> so no, I'm like, Jewish this seems racism. maybe racist. Yeah. racist? <laughs> yeah. Um, the only time, the, the one that pops out in my mind is like a movie that I saw around when The Dark Knight came out and Gary Oldman and Idris Elba right. were in it. And they both play priests. And I believe mm-hmm. Idris Elba gets possessed by a demon. And Gary Oldman keeps talking about the book of Kabbalah. I remember because I kept doing like a why so Kabbalah as like a Joker voice, like a weirdo in the theater. It was a bad movie. Anyway. Uh, was that when you were the, seeing like every single movie that was coming out? Was that during that era? It was close to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Santo, uh, apparently the commentators mentioned that he's undefeated all time, which is especially great considering it's revealed now by Steve that there are this is the 30th one or whatever 37th one so he's never taken an l he's basically the modern day the old day super cena he's john cena he's mexican john cena is my point can't lose uh or roman reigns for that matter um and i wrote (laughs) super cena more like super santo and then i left the podcast forever bye You said that to yourself, yeah. Like while you're watching it, yes. Oh, Bye. Wow. As you as you made the John Cena connection, you're like, I'm fired. Like, Thank you. Cena. I'm fired. Um, but here's the thing that I wondered: Is Santo uh-huh. a good guy or a bad guy? Because in this third fall, the commentators like everybody loves him. He's the he's like undefeated champ. He's the best in the world. He does, he however, dirty. keep eye poking and p- dick punching and face kneeing which all illegal hyper illegal but the ref can't stop him because he's too powerful Damn. so <laughs> power might makes right he, he like he, he could just become president of earth but he chooses not to because he he's benevolent a real lex luger i mean lex luther <laughs> yeah oh, all the lexes for the day yeah a little bit of extra wrestling uh reference there um that's a good answer guys uh he does use a lot of heel tactics though and then he he wins with a reverse arm bar which is like a move i you don't see that often it feels like a you know indie super show move to just twist a guy onto his back and hook his arms um that's funny this is when i saw the faces melt in the background we covered that uh also (laughs) i wrote also this seems to be a sequel but (laughs) Make yeah. up a word that encapsulates the amount of movies this is. You got your sequel. You saga got your is what it is. You got your saga. Yeah. Um, you fought all the monsters in in sixty nine. Nice. Okay. So you professor really fought all the monsters and then had to fight two of them again. But is this a sequel in the sense that like those are the same monsters from that movie? I th- no, because I think these are a different. Dracula and Wolfman because they're talking about how the the professor's great great grandfather was mm-hmm. the one who sealed them away for a thousand years you know whatever amount of time years and so they're like ah yes he, they, he did do that thing yeah and, and like, they need Who? his blood or whatever to resurrect them his, yeah. the blood of the last Kristofsky or whatever is what's his last name Crystal Cri- Cri- Chris- Crystalini or something like that Cristalini. I remember th- I remember them pronouncing Crystal, and I was like, oh, like the uh, wine. Yum. The movie mm. before this is actually Santo versus Frankenstein's daughter. Yeah, I said just that earlier. To... I was, I was, it sounded like I was making a joke, but I was just reading the title. 
Uh, and just well, just going by the IMDb of this director, that that Santo versus the Monsters one isn't he? He didn't even direct that. Seems like a Maybe missed opportunity why. that that Batman, like the Adam West Batman, didn't at some point cross over with this guy. Maybe he did. Maybe there's an episode of Batman where Santo shows up. No, I like, checked. Oh, he's he, like, oh, he, Batman. <laughs> he he crossed over with um, Green Hornet. So uh, Kato, okay. yeah, Bruce Lee was in an, uh, two episodes of the Batman show. Oh. The Green Hornet was a little bit more inclusive than Batman. Oh, you know what? I think this maybe not in the best way, but <laughs> it was. I was wrong. The Santo, no, it was previous, and he does he fights he he fights vam, vampire and El Hombre Lobo before this. You're movie. trying to make any sense out of this. I'm series. trying. A lost no, cause. Don't oh don't yeah. this. <laughs> It's like how Godzilla is the bad guy at the, uh, in the first like two Godzilla movies, and then afterwards he's then a he friend to the boys and girls. And sometimes he's an American Godzilla, and sometimes he's a Japanese Godzilla. So. No, no, had, that's a different imagine, Godzilla. Imagine you had absolutely no information on the Marvel universe, and then somebody showed you Infinity War, and you tried to make sense of it. <laughs> Let me bring up the MCU with regards to this because it's like. That is going to be somebody's going to be trying to pick that apart and with movies missing, like oh, they lost the they lost Ant Man too. Yeah, after World War Three, people are going to be like, What the heck is this? Who's this guy? Uh, and they'll be referring to Ant Man or the Wasp, I assume. Yeah, pretty Ant Man 2 is like going to be a forgotten movie. I'm calling it now. And during the water wars, uh, some water gets on Ant Man 2 computer <laughs> original cut. <laughs> I don't know. I'm in the water world. In the water world. Yeah. No. It sounds like when you said in the water world, wars, some water gets on the Ant Man 2 computer. Those wars are fought with super soakers, like for running yeah. around with water guns. <laughs> ah. I, it's ironic because they are still fighting for the water, but they use water to fight. They have mm -hmm. super, super soakers, military grade super soakers, super duper soakers, super duper soakers. It's salt uh, water. We can't drink that. That's garbage. <laughs> That's true. Garbage. And it burns when it gets in your eyes. Yeah, because it's yeah, also mixed yeah. with piss and bleach. <laughs> uh, ammonia. Um, I see you two enjoy spraying people with ammonia. <laughs> yeah. It's like, actually, wouldn't those two things almost create like a mustard, mustard gas? Thing? Mustard gas. That's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Delicious. Wow. World War One again. Yeah. World War Three is going to be. World War P. <laughs> Listen, the World War <laughs> franchise is exploitable IP, right? We we got to keep the the first two were so profitable. It's been such a while since we did World War. We got to yeah, do they, three, and then Tokyo. They tried Japan. again with Vietnam. They tried again with Gulf War, but nothing really Didn't stuck. Take those those almost, were those were spinoffs. Almost Iraq War. Almost we were this close, but now well, we did get a second Iraq War. That's true. But now Look. we're getting two simultaneous wars that might erupt into a World War III if Iran keeps well, attacking. Everybody download a bunch of 1940s and 50s music to your phones so when the bombs go off, <laughs> we can all be like, So, go bongo, 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 I don't want to leave the Congo. No, 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 no. Bring a bongo, I don't want to. So would That's these a two current wars be like uh, Dante's Peak and Volcano coming out at the same time? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if this movie had a sister movie that was also a Santo movie in that same vein. <laughs> yeah, they came out on the same weekend. <laughs> yeah. Like Batman and UHF all over again. How is Santo fighting Dracula in this movie and the mob in the other one? Yeah. <laughs> or he's fighting he's fighting Dracula in both somehow. It's just different stories. Just different yeah, stories. the mob of higher Dracula in the other one. Yeah. <laughs> Blah! Blah! Uh, yeah, but we're introduced to in the Professor Cristaldi. He's kind of talking about how he, he's Cristaldi is needed to resurrect uh, these guys, mostly Dracula. The Wolfman thing doesn't really make a lot of sense. We'll talk when we get to it. Um, and did you notice when he walks up to like touch all the like MacGuffins, like the like the dagger and all the little things? He keeps looking right into the camera. Like he keeps just like saying his lines and then like glancing into the camera. Mm -hmm. He's it's old. He, this is the first bad. time he's seen one. Yeah, he's a stage actor. Oh, <laughs> yeah. again. 
His nipples are staring right in the camera. <laughs> Listen, you get that big, you try finding a shirt that hides your nipples. Your nipples are out right now, aren't they, Sam? Oh, hold on a second. Let's see. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this got real sexy real quick. Uh, I they Somebody said in this movie that the magic chronology is so confusing and we're like 25 minutes into this thing if that and i literally was like ain't that the truth because the way they're explaining it makes no sense um and then chrisaldi meets with some gangsters and then they're he warns the or sorry i thought eric was chrisaldi because he was like i bring you back from the from the dead eric meets with some gangsters warns them of his employers obviously it's dra- they this movie does this weird thing where it takes way too long for everybody to go oh it's dracula and wolfman even santo for most of the movie is like there's a force coming and then blue demon's like yeah it might be supernatural and he's like i don't know it, it's weird that they bother with that sort of conceit because it's this grisaldi guy's talking about ancient relics in the first 10 minutes of the movie and also the movie's title yeah (laughs) (laughs) they can't see the title they're in the movie they're in the movie but Um, these ancient relics like only one of them gets used right it's the dagger the rest of them are just yeah it's like ah yes and i have this like big brown lump and it's magic and they're like ah, forget that shit yeah we only care about this one yeah also this yeah. necklace and it's magic and yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah fuck that one too yeah yeah those this were dagger can is a is a homing dagger for evil or <laughs> and but they also, just give it to the little girl they're like here you go go off play enjoy exactly oh, it, it, it acts as like the crucifix of the movie there's no garlic there's no crucifix there's no holy water there's just this dagger that dracula is like oh i can't go near it there's also the goofy thing of like when you get an adult to voice actor to voice a child like it always just sounds goofy there's no there's no way you can make a serious movie where you're or even a video game or anything like if it's a comedic performance it's fine because it comes off you know like uh bart simpson or the rugrats and stuff like that it's like okay yeah, yeah you're gonna need to get a, an adult woman to do the voice of this child and it's funny so it's fine but as soon as you put an adult doing a voice of a child in something that's meant to be serious it just is I'm playing um, Seven Rebirth right now, and they I'm do sure that. It's full of it, yeah. And every single kid in the movie sounds exactly like Rosalita. Every I, single, like just like I'm definitely a child. Yeah. I'm definitely a child. It's so <laughs> fucking annoying. And it's like mommy, mommy, like all the time. That well, it's like the girl in this movie that we just watched, where she's. I have to go home just... and do my taxes. <laughs> I mean, <didn't> play. <laughs> play with my dolly i gotta uh, play with my dolly i will say though that when, it, when that little girl gets shoved shoved over later in the movie i was like holy shit <laughs> she shoved her down for real yeah fuck that kid this yeah. uh this next bit is one of the first instances of the movie where the professor just kind of walks around um i think it's meant to be sort of like a foreboding foreshadow but he kind of like goes and like takes off his jacket and gets ready for bed and gets the it's, dagger it's a real like um mr rogers feeling to it because it's like <laughs> i'm just putting on my bedtime jacket yeah because i take se- off my outside cardigan and put on my inside cardigan because in the yeah, 60s so- and 70s the rules were different <laughs> yeah, the yeah until were, jfk killed your- the hat industry <laughs> so you wear your shoes outside but then you have your indoor shoes that you wear inside you need um, an arch support. As Sam had mentioned, though, he uh, he does know what's coming because he read the book. Everybody else was like, I don't know what you're saying. And he's like, I understand everything. And he puts the dagger on her at, like nightstand. Um, and then Eric shows up and fucking chloroforms him out of nowhere. Just bam, yeah. which I thought was dumb. Um, but funny. Then we're just in the crypt and we have... They they string Chris all Eric strings Chris Aldi up by his feet. There's something weird going on with Eric's face too. Like He's got like a weird like giant wound, but also the makeup. There's something strange. Like She's I I don't evil. think 
He's evil. Oh, no. yeah. His 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 uh, face tan does not yeah. match the rest of his body. I think just the idea is smooth. like I think the idea is that he's supposed to be like a a man, like a very low class person. Like, oh look, he probably works with his hands. He's probably right. outside most of the day. Right. Disgusting. Unlike our beautifully skinned heroes who definitely do not have any skin cancer. This guy has skin cancer. Yeah, that's not an actual hunch. That's just one giant skin cancer. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did notice that through it. Also, his like his beard is either he can't grow a beard and spent fifteen years growing what he had, or they just stapled hair to his face. Why did you or point at yourself it. when you talked about that? <laughs> I'm a beard. Because I've been growing this beard for 15 years. I'm stapling <laughs> new ones on. <laughs> I just go out into the neighborhood. I collect the local cats and I <laughs> oh, no, staple this... their hair to my face. No. I don't like it. Well, no. you guys don't like to shave pussy? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> no, Jesus Christ. What have I said? Remember when uh, you said juice earlier and I said juice is fine? You just said something that I don't like. Don't say that again. I'm <laughs> gay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Listen, everybody's yeah. gay in the dark. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the... just going to update the gay council on that. That's, yeah. that's a yeah. really Hey, did you guys know this interesting fact? <laughs> Yeah, guys, everything's why that's funny. Uh, yeah, but uh, never trust a heinous monster from hell, which is good advice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he's like, when he's about to resurrect Dracula, he's like, I want his gold, his gold, which was funny. Uh, he hangs, uh, he hangs Griselda upside down. Pours his, cuts his neck, pours the blood onto the corpses. It's, it's pretty gruesome. Like yeah. the blood effect that they're using in this is like, it's like, it's not that 70s, like, oh, we just poured red paint all over someone and said, eh, that's close enough. Like this was like, like the right kind of consistency, the right kind of color. And it, there was tons of it. I was like, oh, it was, it was real blood. No, oh, yeah. He, he actually died. Yeah. It was cheaper to use real blood. It was cheaper to kill him than it was to source. <laughs> yeah. No, the, well, the, the effects guys. Him. The effects guys hadn't worked it out. They it took them forty four movies before they really figured out how to make fake blood. So they were just using real blood for the first thirty seven movies. That's really funny. Or like this, th they're trying out the new technology in this one. It just looks too real. I have a question for you guys that didn't really make sense to me. This Chris Aldi's like uh, like he can swing back and forth, and he mm -hmm. kind of pulls him over to Dracula and like empties him out a little bit on Dracula. And then Chris Elias kind of swings away, and then Wolfman comes alive. Did I miss something, or did he did, did he take him over and do the same thing to Wolfman? I guess. <laughs> is that what it is? Like it's just sort of like maybe they. I, th forgot I thought that it was like Dracula controls the Wolfman somehow, so Dracula coming back also brought back the Wolfman. But I. I oh, really they are soulmates. They are soulmates. It yeah. is gay gay erasure to not say that. Yeah, yeah they just, were like, uh, just like Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln. Just like yeah. Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. And uh, also, canon canonically, canonically, typically Dracula's and Wolfmen are at each other's necks. Look at Underworld. <laughs> I mean, look at what we do in the shadows. And that's it. Yeah, those oh, are the Van, two Helsing. <laughs> Van Helsing. Van <laughs> Helsing. Oh, and Van Helsing. Twilight. Oh, and Twilight. Twilight. It is pretty, uh -huh. like, to see these two team up. I guess it's, it's just been... a stupid basic bitch idea to be like, oh, it's a vampire. What do we have them fight? A werewolf. Yeah. It's yeah. just been easy. 50 years. Let's 50 let's years have, ago. Let's have vampires fight somebody like a, a real worthy adversary, like orphans or Godzilla. Uh, the homeless. Or Godzilla. <laughs> yeah. How many Draculas would it take to beat a Godzilla? Not the homeless, homelessness. The vampires are trying to end homeless. Yes. Yeah. And this rich family they is like, fuck you. Money. We have yeah. so many MacGuffins. You, it's going to make your head spin. That's real generational wealth. They're Vampire super kick you into a fucking pit of daggers. I got Dracula money. <laughs> they call me the Dracula man, and I got a Dracula plan to trickle down economics. It's going to oh, ruin no, the world. Dracula. <laughs> Dracula Reagan. Dracula nomics. Dracula. 
Dracula Nancy Reagan is a real throat goat. <laughs> she really. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Dracula Nancy Ragged. She she blew everybody on the on the set of Blue Lagoon. What? I don't know. Have you I'm seen like, Blue Lagoon? Look, Brooke Shields was in that. You leave her name. Yeah, name and out Brooke of your Shields started on the set of Blue Lagoon, so I think I know what I'm talking about. We're off the rails this week, ladies and gentlemen. We're figuring out our dynamic with with our newest best guest, <laughs> Cam Gladstone. It's good. It's fun and it's funny to talk silly about this thing. It's a silly movie. I, I wasn't expecting like ah uh, yes. What are the deep moral ramifications of a Wolfman and a Dracula coming together as one team? What does it mean in our current society? It felt like I was watching a Saturday morning cartoon live action. It felt a lot like an anime in a lot of ways because of the bad like vo- like voca- voc cast. Um, I will just take this moment though, Sam, to give your for me. You'll be able to plug your podcast at the end, but the, the reason I chose this movie is because you do a podcast called As a Camp, where every week you try to figure out if a movie's camp or not. I think, and uh, <laughs> and I want to ask you right now: Is this movie camp? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, this, this is, this is camp. Uh, but it's what we call, um, unintentional camp. So film theorist Susan Sontag did a whole treaty like essay just on camp. Like, what is it? What does it mean? Where does it come from? How do we create it? And so generally there are two forms of camp. There's, there's intentional camp and unintentional camp. This is unintentional camp. Like clearly like it's being made because it gets butts and seats and Santos and blue demon are huge stars, right? Like, fuck, like we would churn out 20 million captain America and four movies. If we could, but we can't because of money, but because this is for 36 of however fucking many, like there's diminishing returns and they're pumping out four or five a year and so on and so forth. So the quality clearly has taken a massive hit in terms of, everything and that like the cheapness isn't offensively cheap there's nothing in this that you're just like oh fuck me this is awful no you're like this is bad but i'm vibing with it so you know this this kind of trashy a little bit over the well very over the top ridiculous you know um oftentimes camp is also like a very queer thing and i mean we can say that uh, Santos and Blue Demon, maybe there's something going on between them because they seem to have some kind of history. Who knows? There's Dracula you know, going to town on Wolfman's butt. Who knows? <laughs> you know, Rufus Rex. Rufus Rex, the sexiest man alive, but also a complete sociopath. He's uh, Rufus Rex ass. This is what he's self yells. <laughs> I'm going to seduce her evilly. <laughs> well, th- thank you for that. That's that was insightful. Um, I didn't realize there were like papers written on what camp is because I just was like hairspray is camp. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. Greece is camp. Musicals at larger camp. You know, and, and they make yet. movies that try to capture camp. And the idea of unintentional camp actually is very exciting to me because there are a lot of really like movies that had a lot of earnest intention that just play real bad. So <laughs> like, like this, a great this Joker movie coming up is gonna the next like one? just gonna try so to be it's but it's gonna have like manufactured camp that might not play in its favor. But I will say I want to see it in IMAX because when I saw Dune 2 in IMAX the way that the sound happens, I, w- I walked out of there and I was like, I want to see it. I want to see a sing along musical in IMAX because of how good the sound is in an IMAX. So I'm looking forward to it for the music, but I'm worried that Joker Folly Ado might have that. I haven't, e- I haven't even seen Joker. I'm excited to see Joker too. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, Oh my God, this trailer it's, it's a musical. Hell yeah. You're talking to me now. I had yeah. no interest in sociopath Joaquin Phoenix. The first now, Joker's not great. 
<laughs> I, I'm not, not going to watch it. I don't want to know what's happened in the first movie. I'm going into this one blind. Yeah, it's it, Joker's kind of an idea in that first movie. Lady Gaga's in the second, and I'm on board. And Joaquin Phoenix, kind of hit or miss. Usually good. That hair lipped weirdo. Um, yeah, he's likes to. He, he's like. <laughs> He likes to try to be a method actor, but only goes like 75% of the way or something. Like I can't really put it, my finger on what his, what his issue is, but like he, he's got some, uh, he's kind of like a Nick Cage, you know, a little bit he kind of. Yeah. I think he's hit or miss most of the time. Um, yeah. I like him as a supporting actor in a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 That's how I feel not... about Jared Leto. Do you like Jared Leto like works for you as like a supporting guy, not as like a. Yeah, no, never a lead, always support. Yeah. Like House of Gucci. Have you seen House of Gucci? I haven't watched that yet, but I do want to see it. Yeah. Much fun. And Jared Leto is tolerable. <laughs> yeah. Look, honestly, in the Suicide Squad, it's such a piece of shit that seeing the the weird Joker a couple times was kind of like that's a really interesting take on this. Uh uh I, Zach Snyder? No. Uh, no, it was, um, fuck. What's his name? Uh, what? Yeah. Uh, Anderson. No, no, no. He's, uh, uh, was it Paul W. Anderson or no, it wasn't no, Paul. no, 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 no. For, su- for suicide squad, not the suicide squad. Not it the was suicide squad. It was the, the guy who directed David Ayer. Ayer. That's it. Not David Ayer. David Ayer. David Ayer. David Ayer. David Ayer. Yeah. Yeah. Cause he's like, he's come out and been like, if you guys would have seen the cut I wanted to make. Well, yeah. Mo- yeah. Most David Ayer movies are pretty good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's, he didn't have a good, a fair, a fair shake in that movie. Cause his, his version was meddled with because of, uh, because of Guardians. Uh, Guardians studio. Of yeah. yeah. Studio and interference the- came in and said, make Guardians of the Galaxy for us. And he's like, I guess put more music drops in this. He's like, I, I make it colorful. And- make Harley Quinn put on her little top while the Rolling Stones play. She's we'll sexy. She's sexy. All the incels will love it. Ironically, they hated it because incels hate women. Anyway. Uh, efficient transition from skeleton to Dracula, uh, yep. which I thought was these transitions in this movie are so funny. Like when the when the Wolfman gets stabbed with the pike, and then he just falls to the ground, and then it goes boop, and he's just some foam. I thought that was good. This one is good too, uh, and good by good I mean terrible, but funny that they were like, "This is fine, passable." This is the unintentional camp aspect of it, right? Where they're yeah. just like, "Eh, good enough." Um, this is when I learned that Eric is the hunchback's name. Now, Eric is supposed to be like kind of like the hunch, like Dr. Frankenstein's hunchback. Like, is that sort of no, his I thought character? he was more of like a Renfield than an eagle. Okay, that's actually a good point. Like, a like a familiar, like a super familiar. I thought that he was yeah, just the yeah. hunchback of Notre Dame, just you know. Could be up. that too. Why not? Why not? You don't, no one refers to Igor as a hunchback. He has a hunchback, but his name's not Igor Hunchback. Like, like it's like how the Phantom of the Opera was is a universal monster as well, and you're like, really? Yeah. Like the musical guy? Yeah, but he is. He's in there. He's part of the Rogues Gallery. Of he had like four or five movies, Helsing, I guess. Yeah. You got the creature, the Black Lagoon. You got the Mummy. You got Frankenstein. You got Bride of Frankenstein. You got Invisible Man. Oh, man. David Ayer also directed that Bright movie, but that was a piece of shit as well. Oh, that was garbage. Yeah. Maybe he's not as good as I thought. He's, oh, <laughs> he's he got made, some. I, I know he's got made some Fury, good which is like pretty well respected. Yeah. I don't really. And he's yeah, kind of a middle of the road kind of guy. I think he's also a writer on a ton of stuff too. Isn't Fury the one where that turned Shia In LaBeouf insane? I think he was already. I think that's why he hired. Well, him he was already that, insane. He's already fucking nuts. Knocked his own tooth out for the role. Yeah. Yeah. You're not that guy, pal. He said, I don't know if this is going to work like during the audition. And then he smashed his mouth <laughs> on the doorknob on purpose. Like, how are now? And they're like, okay, you got the job. Okay, fine. Jesus Christ. On the carpet. Aren't you the guy from Holes and Transformers? Yeah, I'll show you a hole. And then he <laughs> pulls his pants down. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think the movie that really was the transition was when he did uh, uh, the Sex Maniac movies. What are they called? What's it called? Nymphomaniac. Nymphomaniac, yeah. Was Sex Maniac. Those? 
Yeah, he's in the first one. I mean, I think the real transformation was years and years and years oh, of yeah, childhood abuse. <laughs> that that, that man did into him go, snapping a bit. That'll get you. you. Look at the Dan Disney Bonifici. system. What? Yeah. <laughs> I do really want to see that documentary about the Nickelodeon system with that foot pervert. Oh, I yeah. It. I watched it. You watched it? Yep. I did. Um, you do you have a foot fetish now? Or... <laughs> no, I don't. Um, if you want to feel horribly uncomfortable for four or five episodes that are like an hour long each, then go for it. No, if I'm not, thinking. you can probably just not watch it and just watch the little TikToks that you'll see every once in a while and be like, Ugh. you'll get the gist from those. Yeah, that was my lens. I saw the t I saw the the real bad stuff from it, and I was like, Ugh. he was like blatant. Like anyway, whatever. This move. Yeah. This the thing about that documentary is that there was another documentary that came out years ago that is all of the same information but it just wasn't wild, widely released the way that this one is. So I'm like, this one was made almost maybe more than 10 years ago and is like not that well known. But then the one that came out recently, everybody's talking about it. I'm like, what about the other one? I think the other one was called like an open secret or something. And it was all about Brian Singer, but also that Peck guy, the guy who was like the main monster, the foot fetish guy, Dan Snyder in that documentary yeah, he's a creep, but like he didn't really do anything other than just be like inappropriate. Whereas this peck guy was like legitimately a predator and like was moving around from studio to studio, like molesting people, like doing horrible things to people. So it's like after watching it, I was like, why is everyone still talking about this Schneider guy when he he's been, you know, D dealt with this other guy is out of prison and still working and it's like man maybe deal with this guy the monster don't anyway. be ridiculous harvey Weinstein. speaking of monsters, <laughs> speaking of monsters. <laughs> oh my god yeah. sometimes this show ridiculous. gets like real serious real quick and uh let's lighten the mood can you play the fart sound please steve uh, <laughs> oh, yeah palate cleanser have like oh yeah so dracula and, and werewolf they're back i noted that the werewolf makeup was like kind of decent and they used the same makeup on like a bunch of them kind of decent anyway well it's just um, a mask it's not it's like a mask <laughs> it's not makeup it's like a balaclava right yeah but i thought it could have been a lot worse. i thought it would have been a lot worse right oh I, yeah i've definitely seen movies where it's just like we stuck a patch of fur on this side yeah and this side we he's a werewolf cat. now he stapled the uh, hair all over the guy's face um but the thing that i thought was really funny here is like one second later, they just cut to Dracula and Werewolf in full on like crime mode, and they just have a lineup of people they're gonna turn like factory style. I thought that was great. That was very 60s Batman to just like cut to that. Um, and then uh, I, I love I that noted, I love that the werewolf is dressed like Luke Cage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I noticed that bright yellow shirt, black leather pants. You're like this it is a sexy very, modern uh, werewolf. Weight belt <laughs> also. But it got very confusing at the end of the movie because Santo and the Wolfman were both wearing a bright yellow shirt and it kept cutting between two fight scenes with a man in a bright yellow shirt. And I was like, what the go? Oh, my brain, my brain, I can't handle this. Uh, I, I did notice that as well. I need them to wear different colors. Give the, give one of them a different shirt, please. Blue Demon, though, is dressed immaculately through this whole thing. Yeah. He's got I, a purple blazer on at one point that I was like, I kind of like want that. Like the whole time I was like, anytime it was just Santos on screen, I'm like, no, 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 go away, Santos. I want to see Blue Demon again because he's, Blue Demon for some reason, I was just star. like, he's cool. That's fantastic. Oh, fuck, man. This this is one of those movies that's like more fun to talk about than watch, I'll say. We, we encounter that a lot on this show. I'm sure you do as well, Sam, yes. where <laughs> you sit through the movie, like almost like homework. And you're almost dread doing the episode because you're like, what are we going to pull from this? But I think like this is one of those ones where it's just kind of fun to like think about it and then talk with your pals about. Yeah, and I, I I had to watch Grumpy Cat's worst Christmas ever for the for the pod. Yeah, this is much easier to talk about than what was that. the verdict on that one? Oh, it was just bad it's like no but it's like 
Was it camp? It wasn't camp. No, no it wasn't. <laughs> it's crass commercialism dialed up to 20. Like so the, it was amount cancer. Of, the amount of times that the movie actively stops to sell you grumpy cat merch oh. and they play it off as like, isn't this a funny joke? Go to www.grumpycatmerch.com to buy grumpy cat merch. We have coasters and stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if it was a real commercial? Fire it, stuff. It, 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 Grumpy yeah. cat gone too soon. Almost like they chose a and geriatric I'm... cat to be the face of Grumpy Cat. Yeah, Grumpy Cat like was a meme and then died two years later. It was crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah we talked about it on the, the that episode, and I was like, "What the fuck?" I thought Grumpy Cat was bigger, longer, but nope. No, in and out. Meme gone, and it, it's it, it's funny to think about. Like, it, it's kind of a great representation of the life cycle of memes and Grumpy Cat's old meme like old old world meme but uh i the only reason i know so much about grumpy cat is i had a friend like this uh, grumpy cat was a meme when i lived in halifax still and i had a friend who like loved grumpy cat loved grumpy cat oh like the, the cat's frowning isn't that so funny and i was like cat's grumpy on to the next where's tazan dan chocolate rain at now that's a meme anyway the news hit my friend was sad, and I was like, "Were they grumpy?" Yeah, they were a little grumpy. Jeez. Mm, All right, <laughs> just like you said, move on about Grumpy Cat. Let's move on. Okay. Oh, yeah. right. we're... Dracula and Wolfman are trying to make <laughs> legions of Draculas and Wolfmans. Yeah, and uh, they do. They succeed in their quest. They do succeed, yeah. and just... uh, Wolfman's acting is hilarious when he's Wolfman. He's just sort of swaying. Um. I mentioned the yellow silk shirt, but Sand, we go back to Santo. He recognizes there is a threat and he calls in his pal Blue Demon. Uh oh. And then we get another full match of Blue cool Demon wrestling. Spot. It's a good shade of blue. Yeah. I just, I for, for whatever reason, Blue Demon is just more magnetic to me throughout the movie. I'm like, ah, San, Santos like constantly walks around being like, ah, yes, I am very intelligent well read and wise as fuck and then there's blue demon in the background going like i'm gonna well, punch actually someone. <laughs> yeah but also blue demon's like like a better detective <laughs> and also like better like just was better. that a, he's just better was that a joke was that a running joke between when he, blue demon shows up he doesn't have to go he's like his his robin but if robin was like smarter than batman is what it felt like a little bit he doesn't need to be braggadocious about it. She's like, well, what if we try this instead? And Santa's like, oh, yes. What a great idea, Robin. Well, I mean, like you guys said, these are both real wrestlers, right? So they probably have, have that, like, The Rock versus uh, Vin Diesel syndrome where they have to, like, figure out who wins the fight between them and both of them have to take the same amount of damage. Or, like, Roger Rabbit where Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny had the same amount of screen time and had to have the same amount of impact on the audience in order to get the rights for everything. That's a good point, actually. Uh, Shawn Michaels and The Rock never wrestled each other during the Attitude Era because they couldn't figure out how they both go over. Yeah, and I mean, famously, now The Rock has like a, a, th a clause in his contracts where it's like a no-lose clause, like I'm not allowed to lose because nobody wants to see me lose it or it'll affect my persona and my on stage. I would love to see him lose. Hey, Rock, yeah. news for you. I think he's he's slowly starting to realize that maybe he needs to lose at some point in order for him to like get knocked down so that he can climb back up again. I don't know about that because at WrestleMania this year, he uh, so the first night there he was in a tag team match, which he won, and the night before that, um, he was at the Hall of Fame and he got inducted uh, during Muhammad Ali's induction. And Muhammad Ali is one of like his daughter gave the rock a belt, the people's champion belt, uh, which the rock then brought out at WrestleMania and then won a non title match. So like he won a participation trophy and then won his match. Uh, I think the rock is high on his own supply, like real bad. I don't like, know. Like I mean, I think he's been this way for a while. This isn't a new thing. This is like since he's yeah. the highest growing actor in Hollywood yeah. at the moment, right? Since so. he reached that pinnacle, he's been there. And I don't think anyone's knocked him down yet from it. But I think that he's going to like the Black Adam stuff. He had way too much power with. right? Yeah. And that was an abysmal failure. 
Uh, blows. I think that's going to, you know, shift the winds of power. But uh, only just time real quick, the problem with Black Adam is that movie's like I saw, watched it on TV at home, and I was the whole time I'm going, man, I wish I was watching this in a theater. But if I had seen it in theaters, I'd be I like, man, the man, I wish I didn't spend money on this movie to watch it in a theater. So you can't really have it both ways. <laughs> My reaction was, why am I watching this? <laughs> I should turn this off. The the problem with Black Adam is that the movie constantly walks up to the line of now this can be a good movie and then it like gives a big middle finger and says no we're gonna do it our way and it's like no no like the the whole plot conceit of like like the americans liberated us from a dictator and then they fucked off and all these criminals came in and took over the country i'm like that's interesting tell me more about it and the movie goes but we don't want to tell you about that black (laughs) adam's here and he can speak english and punch a whole bunch of rockets for like 15 minutes. 15 minutes of rockets. I don't remember. I don't remember anything. My brain, when I'm watching stuff that I don't like, refuses to to remember any of it. It just like that's the Fantastic watch. Four movie for me. The 2014 Fantastic <laughs> Four movie. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I I can't remember a blessed thing about that film. My brain just <laughs> went dump. I remember like the body horror elements mostly when professor or Mr. should have been Fantastic. more body he horror pulled it what well, was supposed to be like real body horror yeah. and they, studio intervention we have to churn out some garbage high hopes for that uh mcu fantastic four uh but yeah another whole match here blue demon so they sort of subvert it where i was like oh they're just gonna do that trope again where it's a you know he wins and the other guy wins and then he gets the third fall nope he wins handily beats him the two um with a leg cradle right into the second fall blue demon wins the two blue demon believes that something supernatural is happening and has a transmitter watch that he has from a previous adventure and i wrote haha it's also sci-fi yeah why not why not he's, he's james bond remember yeah he only wrestles for money the rest of the time he's solving crimes and stopping international crises these yeah i uh they didn't really for this this next scene they didn't really show what wolfman's intentions were so i was hoping they would do a little twisty twisty on us and when wolfman is a good guy or is a is a man he's a good guy and he doesn't want to turn back into wolfman like they usually do but But in this he's full fucking he's evil sociopath nightmare person (laughs) In I, fact, I think love sent, this. I think he sent ninjas to attack. I think this is uh, Laura Crisaldi, the like wife, the blonde the one. They're all blonde. No, they're daughter. literally. No, no. She's she's the she's the daughter because he talks about her daughter being his granddaughter. Yeah, you know, the little one with the knife. So this is like a lineage, but then also their housekeeper just looks like them. No, I thought that was her cousin josephina yeah they keep talking about her being the cousin okay she maybe just she's dressed as a ho- she just dressed as a housekeeper in one scene and maybe like, to fuck? you what why are you making your dr- housekeeper dress like her i don't understand that i don't know it's a lot of blonde blonde uh women who are very light-skinned um that's why i was confused about the voice over acting like why do they have a little bit of spanish twang um, you know, because it's set in Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> play the song. Actually, no, don't play it. I do not play it. Okay, do not play it. Uh, if you want to know what song that is, go back and listen to our last couple of weeks of shows. Um, oh, is Wolfman good when he's not a Wolfman or just sneaking in? Uh, Rufus Rex is Wolfman. Uh, he saves her and then takes her home. So he does. Uh, I thought this scene was really funny. This whole sequence is like like crime crime boss guys like mob bo- guys come in like attacker he thwarts them obviously fake punching them i don't know if you guys noticed that but he like he punches a guy and they, the camera looks right at them and he fully misses and i'm wondering if that was like just you know actor fighting or if that was like he's not going to fight his own guys who was like was that for us to be like oh 
Probably not. I don't think so. I might have been was, looking into it a little bit too much. Yeah, I think that was just bad filmmaking. <laughs> I just, I mean, I just love this whole conceit. Like, like you said before, that normally in in a werewolf movie, the werewolf is the bad guy, and the human version is like, oh no, I'm or so like tortured Dr. Dr. by Jekyll the dead. Hyde, yeah. yeah, but in this movie, it's like ah, the wolf man, he's evil, and here's his human form, Rufus Rex, who's also a bastard and he's just standing around being like i will seduce her for evil <laughs> well, and, the next... and that'll get me fucked and <laughs> evil i'll fuck and also will fulfill our prophecy and plan uh, rufus is mission accomplished goes back to his yeah. boy dracula and he's like your turn i like I, this dynamic through the movie where he goes roof is like i did my thing and dracula's like now i must do my thing and then dracula's fuck dracula fucks up a bunch <laughs> he's so bad at his job he's the boss. he keeps showing up and being like oh no that knife gross. Yeah. <laughs> is that knife made of silver holy shit i'm out of here gotta go or just distraction I'm nauseous yeah distraction gets him twice where he's like, yeah. he's about, he's just bite, just bite, man. All you gotta do is bite. He's like, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Ooh. I wouldn't like somebody sneaking up on me while I'm eating too. Yeah. Like, Every uh, halfway through a burger. <laughs> 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 it's really hard for you to eat at restaurants. There's too many people walking around. You keep dropping food on the floor. Uber Eats has been a savior for me. Okay. Yeah. Dracula is pleased. Uh, Dracula goes after the little girl, but he gets spooked by the daggers. You mentioned uh, that Professor Crisali left her. Uh, they go to check things out because he's just also making a racket. He like gets freaked out and starts like clanging pans, apparently. And uh, when he goes back, he's like, fine, you know what we'll do? Re Rex is the, you know, the calm, smart voice of reason. And he's like, we'll just get her. We'll get Laura. On the next full moon, then you trick Laura into bringing Rosemary or Rosalita to the door of hell or whatever. The door of unknown souls or whatever the fuck. I want to know more about that door of unknown souls. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, I wrote, lol, that... these are the famous wrestlers Santo and Blue Demon as like a statement of like, what? what is this movie? Yeah, they're the famous wrestlers, Santos and Blue Demon. <laughs> the that's how you that's how you do it every single time. Ah, they're not just no, Santos and Blue Demon. They're the famous wrestlers, Santos and Blue Demon. <laughs> I did make a note that just says Linda Crisaldi because I kept forgetting her name. Beautiful woman. I thought she was great. Great actor. She's a great like uh, female empowerment character. She she saves the day a couple times. Um, the <laughs> There, I thought the f so anytime that this moment of Laura and Rufus kissing that I wrote down here was funny because it was what we were talking about at the start of the episode that you guys were mentioning about like these weird quick audio cuts of like the song was play for a second. This one was like obvious that their voice dub is like smoochy and then it's like like saxophony and then just for like a minute and then it just cuts um and i made a note that said this movie is uh so bad yet so fun and good yeah i mean that's kind of the whole thing with this movie is that it is so bad but it is funny and good at times you know you got your fake bat love when the fake bat goes through oh the yeah that <laughs> it's the wings are flapping and just gliding in on strings clearly on a string like one string in the middle yeah. blue, blue demon on a hunch follows rufus back to his house okay this whole part is so fucking laughably dumb so blue demon follows rufus he gets to the house mm -hmm. he tries to climb up the house Yes. looks like a complete dunce cap because they don't like do any like cuts of him climbing they just do a steady shot of him like trying with all his might to get his big giant muscles up onto like a like a beam <laughs> this movie's painful to talk about okay <laughs> sorry keep going keep going uh he gets up to the window he gets the intel rufus sees blue demon 
Blue Demon sees Rufus, uh-huh. and Blue Demon bolts. They the rest of the movie they treat it like they didn't see each other or something, right? Maybe that scene was supposed to be in a different movie and they forgot. And they're like, yeah. oh, we put it in the wrong movie. That's fine. Call... Nobody knows what knows what the fuck's going on in this one anyway. So Rufus just... Rex from episode 47, obviously, not <laughs> yeah. episode 36. This well, is call like Sant- when you're reading two issues of a Marvel series at the same time and you you miss out on one of the the Iron Man issues that that fills in the, the blank holes. You know, yeah, there's, there's stuff standard. happening elsewhere that you need to you need to watch two of the other Santo movies to know what's going on in this scene. You're reading a summer like story arc. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, across like eight different books. Exactly. Like when I when I first got into X Men, I started reading Uncanny because I was like, oh yeah, Juggernaut's on the team. This is awesome. And there was Polaris hanging out, and I was like, who's this green haired vampire girl? <laughs> that doesn't speak ever and isn't being used at all. This is it's like, man, this, this would make way more sense if I had other issues. You were also, what, what are even some other just X-Men, just mainline X-Men? That's a good call. Them? <laughs> There's too yeah, many. I There's do. Too many. I, I, I have a big X-Men. Uh, forget me not rubber maid jazz squid boy, rain boy, Nature girl. No, I didn't mean na- name the X Men. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like you were asking. You forgot the main ones. Rubber boy. <laughs> Rubber maid. Don't be ridiculous. Oh. Rubber maid. Rubber maid. He said rain boy. Oh, rain, rain boy. Of course. Yeah. Multiple man. Jean Grey. Psycho. The maid. Why did you start with multiple man? Yeah. I don't know. Multiple man was in that episode this week. Uh, That's great. We don't have to talk about that. That X Men ninety seven is it's fucking dope. so fucking good. It's so fucking good. <laughs> like holy shit, what are you guys doing? Oh, a genocide! How many times have you listened to uh, 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 that Ace of Base song since last week? Because I've listened to it at least thirty times. <laughs> Happy oh, Nation. Is, is there one in the show? Yeah. Yeah, it's the <laughs> wildest thing. I yeah. haven't seen any of the new show yet. Mild spoiler Very on that. Good. That ep- last week's episode of I haven't seen this week's yet, but last week's episode wasn't just like a good X Men story. It was just like good superhero. It's good story. Period. Stuff. Very MCU feeling is the new X Men ninety seven stuff. Like it, it's got that like this is for the people who know thing that the MCU does. Kevin Feige he has some misses. In the MCU, but a lot of really good like stuff I wanted to see as a kid. And X Men ninety seven is uh, is on that level. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I made a note here that they just wear masks the whole time. So if yeah. you don't know about lucha culture, yeah, of course they do. Any public appearance, a luchador will wear their mask. But they don't wear their mask twenty four seven like at home and stuff but this movie sort of enforces that notion that luchadors are always in their mask which i think is great but what i think is ridiculous is this like <clears throat> kind of superhero-y kind of like actiony kind of movie they're like in their street clothes yeah with he's luchador wearing a nice blazer but then I they go wrestling. I think it's so funny when they're like playing chess and stuff, or like yes. playing cards. They're and, like, erudite. They're 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 world. Just like they're the vi- just punching. The visual of it is just so funny. Like two <laughs> big giant muscly men in luchador masks and very nice clothes playing chess, <laughs> playing while, chess. while they're using like the women as bait in the other room. It's great, and the card game as well. Um, I mean, it's you know. Nacho Libre does does this gag as well, right? Whenever you see Ramses, he's always wearing his luchador mask, even when he's you know at home. Even when he's like getting a massage, he's in the steam room. He's still got his mask on. He's being oiled up. It's funny. It's a funny trope, and I, I wish, I mean, I guess they probably did this with like Rey Mysterio and stuff in the. In well, the. the- North the North. whole idea was supposed to be about the the mystery of who this person is, right? That that Santos and Blue Demon could be 
anyone like it could be your priest it could be your uncle it could be your cousin i mean granted they're physically nothing like them but you know it's sort of a an every man mystery man kind of thing to it like that it would bring great um that in order to protect his family to protect his loved ones he's got to wear the mask so we have no idea who he really is underneath there right and and this kind of thing did allow a lot of people to moonlight as wrestlers you know right. you put a mask yeah. on like yeah like um you could be just you know the pharmacist for a small town but meanwhile on the weekends you're going out and bashing people's heads in dressed as you know el diablo or whatever that's what i was saying at the top of the show where i was like you know if you have a student wrestler who you need to go and who, who's promising who you need to go and just take bumps and and get pinned for the for the show you can cover their face with a mask and inversely the thing about the luchador mask it's a sacred like rite of patch passage to get the mask and then if you lose a mask versus mask match for instance and you lose your mask you're supposed to never be able to wear a luchador mask again it brings great shame to you and your family which has happened over the years there's been a lot of luchadors who have lost their mask and then they they their whole demeanor changes their whole character changes in fact ray mysterio in wcw uh vince russo had the great idea to have him lose his mask and then he became possibly the worst wrestling character of all time uh the horny devil or whatever remember that when he had the little devil horns and it was just his Weird, regular face. face yeah where you're just like you look like a 12 year old what's going on so what they had to do is when wcw was bought by wwe they waited many years uh ray mysterio went back to like the independence and sort of put the mask back on and started working they brought him back and he's never lost the mask since that's why when you're watching a lucha mask and the rudo like the bad guy is trying to rip the mask off the other guy it's because if he manages to get that thing off and people see their face they're never allowed to wear their mask the shame is done and that's the whole thing that's why i think it's so funny that this movie pushes that so hard that to the point that these two dudes these muscle jerks We're all the time are just playing chess with their masks on. I think that's so funny. I mean, I assume that this is a gag that goes through all the movies, right? It's like, got to be. Well, it's, but it's not a gag, though. It's just that's the truth of the matter. That's the kayfabe. I, what I mean is Lucha. like the gag of them that they wear the masks no things. Yeah, yeah like, they could be like, horseback riding or taking or they could be or... in the shower or something like in the shower like literally you like, know one of these shower. has a shower or a bath like anything yeah like or where he's going to the beach or something like that exactly somewhere where it would be it's it is completely re ridiculous or uh, like <laughs> i'm sure they go to like a, a ball at one point and they'll probably be like wearing tuxedos but still <laughs> mask yeah just something like super impractical where the mask would be mo way more of a hindrance to, and, and when they're like alone, you know, like, is there a scene where they're sleeping and they have the mask on stuff? Like just like with, the, <laughs> with like pajamas on and stuff. Yeah. There's a lot so, of gags you could do. So the next, the next sequence is uh Santo and demon uh, follow Eric to a warehouse. Um, Laura sneaks into the car with them after Santo was, like you got to stay here we're going to do something very dangerous uh eric leaves and it turns out it's an ambush from the gangsters who they introduced earlier and they're going to incinerate our heroes in a in a garbage machine garbage fire machine which is just an incinerator and a garbage and, fire machine <laughs> <laughs> um i did a little bit of math here because i couldn't fit either like like what do you want me to put it to do, um, boss and he's like 270 degrees and i figured out that it had to have been celsius <laughs> because that would be uh that would be like 400 and something fahrenheit where if it was 270 fahrenheit it'd only be like 180 so it would take a while for them to cook. Yeah. But 270 I, is not very high. You can but that's why I was wondering because Ooh, it's so warm in this box. Ah. Yeah. 
Was, or they're just was enjoying it. Just it take like, this oh, mask off. Yeah, nice. Was it supposed to be a weird joke where they're like, we're going to just kind of torture them with the fire and not actually murder them? <laughs> that's what I, that's why I did that. That quick maths. Um, I also learned in, in Mexico when I was there a few weeks ago, they call it centigrade, but centigrade and Celsius are like the same thing apparently. So yeah, that's a non-fact. Well, more or less they are actually two different scales um it's fucking weird it's just like of course we need 70 different ways of measuring temperature well great look at canada and its metric imperial nightmare system oh of course you know, we have all sorts of different stuff uh but yeah they laura creates a distraction by knocking some boxes onto the goons and we get like a fight scene and it's pretty bad that that's uh that's what i took away from that because the gangsters use the punches the wrestlers try to use like wrestling moves and wrestling like d like double axe handle sl slams and slap like chest slaps like you know what i mean like rick flair slaps and yeah. like splashes you know like at one point i think blue demon like goes to the second rope or the third rope basically and does a splash which I thought was ridiculous. He climbs up on some boxes or crates and yeah. Whoa. And like wrestling, they do use like wrestling stomps while they're, you know, like the kayfabe stomps, but the gangsters are just like throwing haymakers, like, like real punches. They're not trained. Yeah. <laughs> they're trained by the streets. The yeah. Streets over There's no here. ropes in the streets. I was trained by the streets. Anyway, we had a phone call between Rufus and Eric. It's pretty funny. It's like the most overacted shit. Just um, that Rufus knows how to use a phone. Yeah. Like he's been dead for a couple hundred years, apparently, but phone, easy. <laughs> or so, was he? Was he in the last movie or who knows? There's a good chance he's been. This is not his first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a great. It's not a great look. Uh, I wrote good cheese for all this. The overacting and calling them, calling them idiots like was pretty funny, you know? And this is when I noticed like there's a scene where Blue Demon and Rufus are in the same room, but they don't know each other. So like, do they not know that each other saw each other during that exchange from before? Maybe that's the explain away for that bit. But Who's they saw this masked other? man. It could be a totally different masked man who yeah. snuck in into my window. There's a lot of masked men in this in this world because, like, there's the Blanco guy from the fight with Santo at the beginning, and then at the end of the tag match, like, just another random luchador. Listen, um, I, I am not gonna. I'm gonna say what we're all thinking. All these masked men, they just look the same. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I listen. I say the shit that no one else is willing to say. All right, cancel me all you want. Don't cancel me. Netflix they don't know. One has a blue mask specials. and one has a silver mask. <laughs> That's I don't true. see color. <laughs> he's, a, he's a Republican. You might be colorblind, man. Like you might want to go to like an eye doctor or like a, any doctor. Really, I think you might want to <laughs> see a doctor. Um. No, but they they do get they do get tricked by the trap. They seek herself. Oh, they go to a new trap. They go to the next trap, There's which is like traps. a mansion. Um, they seek herself in the window. They uh, this is when like Santa's like Santa is actually the smart one in this one, where he's like, "We should not both go in there in case it is a trap. You hang out here by the car. I'm gonna go rushing in and just interact with anybody I see." Uh, and then he immediately sees zombie Crisaldi, which, you know what? S side load me a new monster movie. It's zombies now. We got zombies. Um, he's met by, he's met by like Dracula with two concubines who are wearing those like red veils, veils yeah. which are like also zombies, I think. I think they were supposed to be vampires. No, they, they've, yeah. got, they've yeah. got the teeth. Like all the vampires have like the the shitty teeth. Yeah, the yeah. the goofy, like, unhideable. Teeth. Like, uh, yeah, there's just like, to four, four inches of tooth hanging out yeah. in front of my even head. even like really good vampire movies in the seventies didn't have good vampire teeth. <laughs> like they they still look kind of goofy for the most part. If you watch yeah. the Lost Boys, they actually have a 
That's not from the seventies. No, I know. I know that's the eighties. Struggling. My point is struggling with vampire teeth is not, it never really went away until CG. Yeah. Even true blood, the teeth look goofy. Yeah. They always, they is that show teeth. worth watching? True. For the first while, know, yes. Time, and then yeah. once they introduce fairies into it, all of a sudden it's like, Oh no, this got weird. <laughs> no. I but, believe I watched all of it, but. I also remember being like, why is it the matrix now? Like when they're, (laughs) cause I'm about to finish Deadwood and I'm trying to decide what to do next. I might do the strain. Oh, you know, it's really good. Evil. If you haven't seen evil. Oh yeah. 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 Cause it's, it's the, the best way to describe it is like, um, it's like the X-Files, but for Catholicism. So they're a team that goes around like investigating miracles and possessions to see like, oh, is this a real possession so that we don't have to send an actual exorcist out? And uh, what ends up happening is they'll, they'll usually find like mundane explanations for things. But meanwhile, like actual supernatural evil shit's happening in the background too. But it really blends these these fun levels of like, the show can be terrifying and disgusting, like great practical effects and special effects, but it also airs on the side of goofy when it needs to, like the big bad guy goes to see his therapist and his therapist is an eight foot tall goat demon who sits him down and says, so last week we were talking about your mother and it's just like, yeah, okay, great. You know, therapist goat demon, man. That seems fine. But there's also all these like, ho- like, yeah, you 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 get these scenes of like uh, the main character being tortured by a demon at night, and like she's having her fingers chopped off one by one. It's like, whoa! And then Andrea Mer- Martin comes into the show, and she's a nun who can see demons, and she kills like six in a row with a shovel. It's great. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll look into that after this because I like the I like the macabre. Speaking of the macabre, macabre, can you guys explain to me what happened with the full moon scene? Because I didn't really. No. Like, <laughs> I, I know. I know they mentioned like, oh, on the next full moon and stuff. So apparently either this movie takes place over the course of just two days or it takes place over the course of a month. That's what I was thinking, because he definitely goes werewolf and then isn't werewolf. And then they have a bunch of werewolf crew and then there's this scene during this where you just shows like a, a white circle and you just hear a bunch of noises and what i thought was happening there was wolfman going into feral mode and <clears throat> didn't really explain anything it just cuts to the police the mo- the police commissioner guy comes in who doesn't have an accent and also refers to the mob boss as the mob boss and i was like well, if you know that he's the mob boss, why don't you arrest him for fucking racketeering mob or stuff? Yeah, racketeering. <laughs> and then I just wrote down on pay- on a Word document, this is so weird. <laughs> that was the first time you wrote that? Holy no. Shit. <laughs> <it's not>. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I wrote, this is weird and cool. But this time I was like, I don't just know. No, now, I, I do get the impression from the version that we saw that this may be like a redubbed version that, I mean, they probably dubbed it way back in the seventies to take to an English market or in the eighties, but the quality of audio for it may be a redub. So there's, there's a good chance that like the movie is just naturally missing parts to it just due to being like, Oh, just try like, to like make it that, make sense. like, we're just like, we're going to shove a scene in here and, uh, how do we make this make sense? We'll have the police commissioner say that he arrested everyone. Great, good. That that'll that'll stitch it together, right? No questions asked. Stop asking questions. It is like very janky at times too, where there'll just be silence and someone's flapping their gums and nothing. There's no one talking, and you're like, okay. And then another person will start talking. And you're like, where's that person? It cuts to them off screen. And you're like, okay. It it's is. also possible that the version that you watch, Steve is different than the version we watch. It is very possible because I have the one that is no longer exists apparently. So yeah, uh, I, I, I don't know, but it, I mean, it made it seems like it made just as much sense to you guys as it did to me, which is not a lot, yeah. not a lot of sense. And also I think I got more out of it when we were, the, the three of us were kind of talking to each other about doing this movie and we were sending the video around to each other and just watching little bits and pieces. I think I got more out of it then 
as like a novelty than having to actually sit down and like try to make sense of it in a format that's well like a lot of the movies we do on this show it probably would have been more enjoyable to watch with a group rather than yeah yourself trying to this this movie is what i i I would generally classify as like a good background party movie you know when you're having just like a house party oh i'll put something on and you you would pop something like this on so that people can sort of sit down and go oh cool fun haha and then oh what's that you work in textiles tell me more about that oh whoa hold on santos is about to punch dracula in the face which never happens which i'm frustrated about but this is one of like toronto has a lot of bars that just have movies on a screen at them and this i'm sure that this is played on a screen in a toronto bar you know in that same in that same context with no sound any any of these santos movies could be yeah right in fact i'm going to open up a new bar that just plays santos movies with no sound Uh sounds dope that's that's the that's the gimmick (laughs) <laughs> yeah you could call it you could have a a, a custom drink called the blue demon yeah it's just f- five ounces of blue curacao oh, enjoy yeah. <laughs> somehow a bestseller with the college kids but don't yeah. buy that it's 19 dollars. Yeah. <laughs> they keep paying for it you're not yeah. gonna say no yeah it's the blue demon there's blue blue puke all over everything <laughs> oh it's my awful. god Another buddy, another person went into a sugar induced coma. <laughs> we got to check to see if they're check their glucose levels before you give this to them because they might be a diabetic. Yeah. Uh, Dra- Dracula shutting you down. Yeah. <laughs> that commit that shitty commissioner comes in. And he just God damn insulin inspector. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> S- SVU insulin edition. Dun dun. Truly famous dun, dun. sugar dr- <laughs> crimes. No, I, what I saw was, as I saw a guy drink a 19 ounce <laughs> blue curse out, he keeled over. All right, I guess this is a job for no, the like a, It's a corpse in an alley, they yeah! open the mouth, and the, the gums and the tongue are just oh. pure blue. <laughs> God, damn. God damn it. Fifth blue one this week. Yeah. Well, Never we, gets that's, easier. That's the, hey, did you see this one backdoor pilot for... Uh, special blue man's unit the blue man group <laughs> the blue man group uh dracula gets gets to lena but santos intervenes and this is one of those moments where he just you know distracts him uh one of the minion vampires does get josephina and i th- i thought that this was going to be another like oh she's not going to get bit but she does get bit <clears throat> this is where i thought she was a housekeeper maybe she's not Lena does almost catch them uh, when she op- she walks in and opens the windows. Somebody should have warned her that don't open the windows during a during any sort of supernatural uh, incident. Yeah, and don't you know Dracula can turn into mist and a bat? So many <laughs> options he has. Now. But we do see the bat, and it's a party city bat. The wings don't even flap; it just kind of flies out the window on a string. Uh, the Dracula just this is this drove me nuts because Dracula just tries again and succeeds while the boys are playing chess. Yeah, why not? Two minutes later, he just does the same shit again. Yeah. And gets her and has her go out to the garden or whatever. Uh the gardener and blue demon. Well, earlier in the movie, we kind of I skipped over it. I forgot to take a note, but he when he tries to like mind trick her, she walks out into the garden, and Santos is like, "Go back to your room, woman. Get in your cage." And and then it just happens again, but this time she walks out. Santos is like, "I'm gonna go to the study and study vampires or whatever." Exactly. And they don't finish their game, which I I don't know why that drove me so nuts. But it's like, did he checkmate him or did he not checkmate him? But Blue Demon f- follows Lena out into the, the yard. They go off into the woods. The gardener gets knocked out. He gets up. Santos is in tow. They all go into the woods. The, the abandoned house in the woods is like the final showdown area. Uh, Santos, when Santos comes out of the study and just everybody's gone, Lena's Lena's gone. Rosalina is possessed, like taken. Josephina's possessed and gone. Um, 
demon gets captured and, and chained up. Lena's in the house in the woods. Rosalina's in the house, just kind of around. Laura's released from the hell room. Did you guys clock what this room was actually called? Because it had some like ridiculous name, like the host, the the room of undying souls that never get to go to hell or heaven. But when the door opens, it's clearly just hell. Um, she's also a zombie. Rosalina's like wandering around the house at one point. She opens a door and finds the Crisaldi demon. He wanders off. This is what I'm saying. Like people just kind of like walk around in this movie at times. Yeah. Like it's, it's it's bad storytelling. It's uh, not Eric, the most interesting or exciting. No, there are good moments in this movie, but the stuff you're listing right now is not it's any. Just of it. like yeah, <laughs> just things like, that are happening. Uh, we're 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 hitting the end of this movie real quick. Eric brings the news that Santos is there and off camera is killing werewolves. Which I was like, just show him battling show werewolves. Us, show me, like, show Santos, like, ripping a werewolf's head off. Yes. Even if it's a stupid, uh, bad head, like, it, I would be fine with it. Anything. Like, it can be just as campy as everything else in this movie, and it would be because fine. Because Santos wears a silver mask. Mm -hmm. He can kill them. Silver. You silver. can't send Blue Demon out to try and kill nope. a werewolf. Blue Demon's just drinking blue Curacao shots the whole time. Wasted. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like just going into the end of this movie, Ro there's that scene where like Laura's trying to take Ros Rosalina to the, the hell room. She drops her dolly. The zombie woman like staggers back into the hell room and the door closes behind her. Rosalina's just like, oh, I'm in a little, I'm in a hell pit of my own. I'm alone in this cave, which I thought was like, what is this trying to convey? It's not trying to convey anything. It's just things are happening. The Then there's Eric gassing Santos. He binds Santo. He gets the dagger off Santo. And then he fucking kills himself with it. I mm -hmm. fucking loved this because yeah. the dagger's magic. It's, it's always been like kind of swiveling around. They can point towards evil because uh, it's like an evil seeking dagger or whatever. And so when he has it, he has it like pointed at Santos. He's like, ah, I'm going to stab you. And then you just get this close up shot of his hand and the dagger flips around and then flies into his stomach. And the last thing he says, he doesn't go like, ah, or anything. He goes, I committed so many crimes. I stopped being human. Yeah, I a <laughs> and I <laughs> lost it. It was so funny. Yes, you're no longer human. Therefore, you should die. So not only is it like uh like the dagger a dagger is a more effective monster hunter than any actual monster yes. in this movie. Yes. It's not just a dumb MacGuffin, it's also the fucking lasso of truth from Wonder Woman. Basically. It makes you admit all your Oh, truths. I see what you're saying. I didn't understand what you meant there for a second. Yeah. Oh I think that was it. to be an epiphany on his part where he's like, Oh, why is it stabbing me? Oh, it's because I'm a monster now, because I like, committed monster. so many crimes. Oh, uh, children, that's why you shouldn't commit crimes because you'll Looks end up right like at the me, camera. Uh, yeah. hun hunchbacked and deformed of the face and tanned only on the did he become Donald Trump? Yeah. Is that what happened there? This is Donald <laughs> Trump's origin story. <laughs> And that's why he's a monster. Uh, so, yeah. for absolutely no reason now, the wolfmen tase each other when they're becoming wolfmen. And yep. this one wolfman, I guess all the other guys did it and succeeded because this one wolfman has to cross a plank across a, a pit of spikes uh, yeah. while R Rufus Rex is on the other end of the plank just like fucking with it to try to knock him off. He, of course, fails. I wanted to see somebody get impaled no didn't happen no you, well, you just we do see it happen. Go like oh okay yeah no, well he's gone um blue demon is just tied up watching all of this during it um why don't they just turn blue demon into a werewolf or a vampire or something right yeah like he's right there why wouldn't you have like ah one of the most powerful and famous wrestlers in the world just go like cool you're one of us now bud enjoy maybe they were maybe they were worried that he would still be good and then he would just be stronger because he would be a, a werewolf luchador. Because maybe they were already evil when they turned into werewolves, so they maintain their evilness. Whereas if he turned, he would be a good werewolf. Yeah, I don't want to create a good, powerful werewolf then. Yeah, it's just that's just shooting yourself in the foot. Because then a you got morality fight. werewolf, like they did in Van Helsing, where they turned Van Helsing into a werewolf. Yes, exactly like Van Helsing. 
Yeah. <laughs> Finally, me having seen Van Helsing twice yeah. comes in handy. I wonder what <laughs> me watching that movie once a year would pay off. This is the yeah. moment. <laughs> Finally, I've <laughs> decrypted all your clues, Mr. Santos. Luckily, they uh, have another ham-fisted battle with the Wolfman goons. Um, Lena, also Lena's like tries to get to Blue Demon and Santos by crossing the pit on the on the plank. Which I'm also, like, oh, that plank does not look like it'd be that hard to get across. It's real wide. Yeah, it's true, it's but if somebody's on yeah, it, yeah, they're fucking it. with it. The wobbly handles, yeah. So nobody, nobody was fucking it with when she came over. So it's true, just fine, of course. I also right. posit Sent- that. I also posit that the reason why Blue Demon was able to get across the plank is because two inferior wolfmen were shaking it. it yeah, the Rex Rufus, Rufus Rex was able to do it because he's the supreme leader of the uh, wolfmen. Ugh. So but I mean, sentences how fun- are new sentences. How, how funny would it have been if Lena's walking across and Santos is just like, all right, and now testing you. Yeah. <laughs> ah, why are you doing this? Oh, just making sure. Yeah. Oh, Rosita. Lena is the Lena just shows up out of nowhere as she's want to do. Yeah. Gets gets Rosita. I call her Rosalina this whole time. I don't fucking care. Takes her out. Uh, the transmission, the transition of Wolfman getting impaled is funny. Santos faces off against Wolfman. They're battling it out. Dracula. Oh yeah. And then Dracula comes over and then he just sort of watches. (laughs) Yeah. From across the pit. He's like a fight cuck. (laughs) Mm, The first rule of fight (laughs) cuck is no talk about fight (laughs) cuck. I think oh, Fight Tuck would be a better movie than this, actually. <laughs> oh, he's really beating up the wolf man. I wish I could beat up the wolf man. I... No, I'm just beating myself up. All right. Perfect. Okay. Anyway, um, I want to say before we just finish this out here and get to our final thoughts, there is a bit of an ending to this movie. Did you guys feel a palpable like turn in this movie where you were like having a good time and then suddenly weren't because I did. And it was about the last, when we got to about the last 20 minutes and I, I turned off the movie to come home, like to commute home and finish it. I was dreading finishing it the whole time. Like it was fun. The conceit of the movie is like a fun premise, but when you're actually in it, it like it has diminishing returns almost every five minutes as the movie runs. I was high as balls, so honestly, like <laughs> I was just sitting there. You're going, like, this like, rules, man. No, no. Oh, my my brain was just going, you don't need that dump. You don't need that dump. And then <laughs> when, when you mentioned the pit, all of a sudden my brain was like, Oh, wait, I remember those. You enjoyed these guys getting impaled, right? And I was like, yeah, Right. Man. Yeah. I think that the the entirety of the fight sequence at the end becomes pretty taxing, except for the part when he keeps throwing spears into people. I was like, Okay, I, yeah, I hope that this goes yeah. on way more i want him to keep and they just they people. just kind of like poof into smoke but not like yeah. they fall poof, over poof, and then they like fall the over and then it's just yeah it's it's not even like it cuts back to him and then over to them and there's their smoke it's like just within the frame it snap cuts to them just now there's a stick in the ground with a bunch of goo and smoke there yeah yeah and the, the point that it was almost confusing i was like what just happened is that them? Oh, that's them. Okay, yeah. that's supposed to yeah. be them. They just the final slow. boss battle sort of outlines this perfectly because it literally just Blue Demon throws that like hook across, like a hook on a rope, yeah. and and Santo just it really it. makes no sense to be in this cave. I was like, why is there like a what's it a what's it hooked here? onto? Yeah. <laughs> why is this here? But he just double kicks them into the pit. He doesn't he oh, doesn't punch Dracula. Most climactic thing I've ever seen in my life. Yes. He doesn't punch Dracula a single time in this whole movie. I'm going, is he going to fucking face off in a fist fight against Dracula? Because that's going to be tight as shit. It's crazy that they're they're both there and they're both like slowly walking towards him. And then he just double kicks. Double kicks. They're both dead. dead. That's that. (laughs) What what did Dracula even do in this film? He got got scared by a dagger. He got Uh shocked a couple times. He turned Uh into a bat one time. He raised the and then he army, died. And then he Rex died. Rufus, Rufus Rex, whatever his fucking name is, much more efficient at being a much bad more guy. efficient. That might have been sort of the 
the mission to like make Dracula seem like the buffoon and have like have a this is like Santos and Blue Demon versus the Wolf Man. I thought that it was so. supposed to be like vamp Dracula is like he's supposed to be the ultimate boss. So it would make sense for him to do absolutely nothing the entire movie and then have some sort of like some sort of final battle moment at the end, but oh it turns out I can just like summon vampires and they're all gonna yeah, fuck or like use telekinesis or something or or he yeah, and instead it was just like blood i'm walking towards you oh no a pit I'm and also like, one of one of dracula's most famous abilities is that he can also turn into a giant wolf so him turning into like a more monstrous wolf a man second been, wolf yeah it would have been cool but no Nope. Um, they kind of just they don't even high five, but they basically high five each other and then have a tag match with uh, the two other wrestlers from earlier. And that just kind of goes on for five minutes. And then there's no credit. There was no credits in the version. The credits I are at the beginning. Y- yeah. OK, fair enough. Which was in a lot of old uh, movies. The credits are yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. That's so there's why no MP the trailers would actually come at the end, which is why they were called trailers. Whoa. Whoa! Fuck. That's it. That's... Fucking blew my mind. I did know that. I did know that. And I did. did you I... you just saying that to be cool with me? No. Okay. <laughs> no. 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 Um. Did I write anything else here? I didn't. I didn't even really write a final thought. But we'll get to that. Uh. Is there anything else about this movie, guys? We didn't talk about or mention. Um. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have an early night I mean, tonight, it's boys. Nice. It's kind of nice that, like, at the end. The announcers are like, they've done it. Evil has been defeated once again. But he's just talking about two shitty wrestlers and not uh, the actual monster. Can you, they can you give me a theory corner sting? I got a little a little theory for you. <gasps> just real quick. Theories. Check this out. What if during this tag match, Santo was just imagining all of this? You mean he, he really likes the whole thing? Or- he, this all just happens in his head during that tag match at the end. It's just three matches is the is the reality. And during the last match, he's like, "These guys are really coming on to us like a Dracula and a Wolfman." And then, no, uh, no, 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 no. I I would say I would say no. That's not possible because uh, I mean you you've both seen Total Recall, of course. Yeah. Right. So the whole thing, everybody's always debating like, was it a dream or was it real? And the thing is like there are sections of that movie that Arnold Schwarzenegger's not in. Why would you dream like M- Michael Ironside yelling at people <laughs> like without you being there? Cause it's so a really same- entertaining dream. <laughs> well, okay. It's Michael Ironside yelling at people. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. But same thing here. It can't be a dream. Cause like, like he had full on, he, he imagined Dr. Cristaldi walking around doing his Mr. Rogers bit. Oh, wouldn't it be nice if a professor took his shoes off, changed his cardigan? <laughs> it would make this dream more. <laughs> Santos is very, very mediocre daydreams. I wonder what he's wearing now. Oh, a different <laughs> cardigan. All right. The theory corner is fucking tranced. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I would say that my dreams don't always involve me. Sometimes I dream about that's true. it. That's true. has absolutely nothing to do with me. So, how about how about we talk about the home alone of it all? The what? The if home alone of it all. What do you think the home alone is the home alone of it all? Can someone please tell me when the home alone of it all? I really got to know. When is the home alone of it all? What is the home alone of it all? Now, that's the home alone of it all. It's very simple. The Home Alone of it all is the idea that in the movie Home Alone, you're there to see Kevin McAllister booby trap that house. Okay. Yeah. Most movies have sort of that similar thing where there's the bit at the beginning where you just get to the part that the trailer shows a lot of the time. That's where Steve's part of the this like theory comes in. It could be the trailer could be like the part that you came to see could be literally the third act. Sometimes it's like the home alone of it all. Um, with that explained, Sam, what's your home alone of it all? I mean, it would have been these two guys fighting Dracula and the wolf man, but they don't even do that. Cause you know, they just drop kick them into a pit of spikes at the end. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I mean, wait. It's, 
it's I and I was I was half expecting in that pit of spikes for them to be like like Dracula to be like you think spikes would stop me yes. and turn into mist and come up and be like haha now you and then the dagger but you look at the runtime and there's three minutes left and you're like oh <laughs> I guess the dagger doesn't matter like it's a magic dagger that kills Eric <laughs> <laughs> it's an anti Eric dagger. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why. That's why you gave it. It's like a pervert will show up and try to attack my granddaughter. Here you go, honey. Take, <laughs> take this yeah. anti-Eric device. Yeah. This um, dagger has been in our family for hundreds of years. It kills perverts immediately and instantly. <laughs> also, it will seek them out. You don't have to do anything. You just have to hand it to a perv. It'll take care of the rest. <laughs> It'll take care of the rest. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's pretty good. What about you, Steve? What's your home alone at all for? I mean, the home alone for me is when the, he resurrects Dracula and you see his, his plaid inlay to his cloak. And I was like, Oh, I've never seen Dracula with plaid before. This is kind of good. And I was really hoping we would get Dracula in a bunch of outfit chain, like wardrobe changes or something, but didn't happen um and i like that i thought i don't know i i didn't know what i was expecting for dracula and the wolfman teaming up i thought there was going to be more of like a a story to that some sort of plot thread of like dracula is resurrected and then he seeks out the wolfman like i've heard whispers of a wolfed man that runs through the woods at night and like he goes and finds a wolfman to to recruit but no they're just friends already i guess really good friends and uh they were roommates hey erasure <laughs> yeah exactly gay erasure in hollywood or whatever <laughs> the mexican equivalent of hollywood is i don't know what it's called M mexico wood of course oh <laughs> <laughs> of course um well, yeah I, I, it would be the resurrection but at, at the same time that's because i had to pick one because there isn't really one for me M i'm with sam in a lot of ways like i i guess i wanted to see the interaction between two luchadors and two famous hollywood monsters obviously disappointing but i don't think this movie it might be a movie that like doesn't have a home alone at all because may like we didn't they're, they're, good, good luck finding a trailer for this like a legitimate trailer of the era if they even bothered to make trailers for these you know like I don't know. They would I really just wanted to see the, the newspaper. <laughs> like I it. really just, yeah. I really just wanted to see Santo punch Dracula in the face and it never happened. I, and I guess settled for Dracula punching Santo in the face. <laughs> right. Either um, or. I guess with that, we'll go to our final thoughts and then we'll fucking talk about some. No MPAA, I guess, huh? No MPAA. No. Sorry, Sam. We'll get you next time. Uh, MPAA. So the game is a game we play. It's very dumb, but it, it's a crowd favorite. But nobody, nobody was really around. You know, what we should have done for the game is guess which one of these in the series of movies it was. <laughs> if I oh had yeah, <laughs> if we had, yeah. Hindsight's twenty twenty on that. Yeah. Um, it's time for our final thoughts. Just like at the beginning, the uh, the guest goes first. Uh, just to give you some parameters, if you want. Just a brief summation. Um, if you want to give it a, uh, you know, a rating out of five or out of ten, or a, a joke rating, whatever you want, just sort of give your final thought, Sam. So I'm going to go with how we do it on the show. Is is it camp? Perfect. Uh, this this movie is camp. It definitely is camp. It's unintentional camp. Uh, like I, I I don't think Santos and Blue Demon are sitting down being like, you know what, be really fun. If we fought Dracula and a Wolfman, but didn't actually fight them at any point, right? It's you know it's schlocky, it's cheesy, it's got you know some cool like blood effect when they kill that one dude, and but then all the rest of the other effects are party city. <laughs> Look, I got a smoke machine, guys. Look, awesome smoke machine. Let's use it. I have a smoke machine. Uh, <laughs> Oh Makes no, he's been easy noise. Yeah. Smoke is coming. <laughs> but it's definitely it's definitely a very camp movie. I would I would absolutely say that this is uh not not a not a hard recommend, like in terms of like go out, see this thing. It's like 
you want to spend some dumb fun and not have to use brain hard. This is probably right up that alley. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then I give it four potential face punches out of five potential face punches. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Uh, the thing has a delay, Jason. I don't know what you want from me, all right? You know, we got to fix that. We got to fix that. <laughs> Steve, what are your final thoughts for the movie? I'm not saying all that. Um, um, Dracula. This movie was, I don't know, it was fine watching it. I found it actually more difficult to talk about it than I did watching it. Um, just because every time we started talking about something, I was like, there's nothing in this scene that I want to talk about, really. But there's lots of funny bits where I, I was giggling to myself, like when that lady shoves that child over. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's rough. Um, I really like all of the stuff where they're in their mask in impractical situations that really doesn't call for them to wear a mask. I kind of wish there was more of that, but who knows? There's fucking 55 movies, so they probably do a lot of it in the other movies as well. Um, I don't know if I can re- recommend it to everyone, but I can definitely recommend it to somebody who enjoys things that are of this era that are you know nonsensical not necessarily hinged in terms of like worrying about plot or plot hooks they just kind of like push things along and they're like we're gonna have a couple things happen and then eventually like everybody came here for they'll all meet up in a cave and dracula and the werewolf man will be defeated that's what's gonna happen and it does happen so you know you, you you're not left hanging at the end and evil is defeated once again um if i had to give this a rating i would give this one non unmasked luchador (laughs) i really wanted the mask to come off but it didn't happen there was there was something more that no not necessarily in the fact that i want to bring great shame just in the fact that i felt like there's something hiding in this movie that i didn't get to see and i really wish that i got to see it Uh, okay that's good that's good Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. There you go, Steve. Oh, thanks, me. Dong. There we go. Uh, It's real simple. My final thought is this. I had high expectations going into this, and this movie managed to thwart every expectation I had. Um as far as that goes like i had a good time watching it but i think i kind of accidentally told you guys my final thought when i said it just every time that i thought something cool was going to happen it got like it, it it didn't and as the movie went on almost in five minute increments after about an hour i was like uh and i really just i wanted that final fight scene to have some more meat to it but Dracula never gets punched in the face um i give this movie a two out of five and i also give this movie a punch to dracula's face (laughs) finally somebody's punching at dracula somebody had to do it Perfect. So with that, um, we're going to get out of here in a second. Uh, This is the plug section of the show. Sam, why don't you tell us uh, about yourself and what you'd like to plug? Well, hi there. My name's Sam, and uh, I'd love to plug you sometime. (laughs) Single, cute, gay boys out there. Uh, (laughs) um, No. Uh, I do a podcast as well it's called uh is it camp you can find it pretty much wherever you find podcasts and uh yeah like like i said the whole purpose of it is we're not there to be like the definitive definitive experts on anything but we're going to talk about like this often overlooked and frankly queer subgenre of media right we generally do movies but every once in a while we venture into like tv books you know other things as well you know just try weird things out we like to we like a theme we do theme months and uh, it's uh, real silly goofums times. Like um, we just did a two and a half ap- uh, hour episode on the last uh, Dungeons and Dragons movie that came out. We had so much fun doing that because that, that movie's was... dope. 
It's a great I like movie. That. Yeah, and it's Fember good. showed he's a big chunky boy. He's so fat that dragon. <laughs> Uh, and then uh, you can find me online at my new handle. I changed my handle this week for my, my wrestling because I wrestle with super kicked. Well, and you can find me at slam Campbell Campbell spelt the Scottish way. And yeah. Great. It's uh, kind of it. And then I work on TV shows. So I don't know. Watch the new season of what we do in the shadows, <laughs> which everybody will the final season. Yeah. Very excited for that. Um, thank you for coming on, Sam. We're gonna have you and Jacob last week. Uh, I owe you a good episode. Um, I know that we have a good rapport. We managed to get we squeezed a di- we squeezed a rock, the juice of a rock. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but we got some good stuff in this episode. Delicious uh, rock juice. <laughs> well, the two and a half hours you guys talked about the recent D&D movie was probably a little bit more pal- uh, palatable. That we think that we got some good stuff out of this, so I I appreciate your time. Um, you can find us on all social media, of course, as I mentioned at the top of the show. Uh, we are, of course, called Hey Did You See This One, and that is our handle pretty much anywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, the main social medias we use are um, Instagram, Facebook, twitch uh youtube those are kind of the four big ones we stopped using all of the <clears throat> like the the twitters and x's of Evil. the world because yeah. they suck it's too hard to get yeah. traction um in addition to that i have to do a little bit of a rigor roll because we are a part of the united federation of podcasts and you can catch all of our shows across the internet as well um, I'm going to run them down very quickly. There is, of course, Graphic Histories, which is a uh, graphic novel, comic book podcast. There's Trivial Debates. Um, I think, Sam, I want to recommend you to be on this. I'm going to put in a little word with my guys. But this is essentially, there's a there's three people doing debates over a subject. I, I was on an episode uh, for The Office, and I was on a, another episode for... Uh, Something else I can't, it's escaping me. I'm trying to get through this fast. Steve was on an, is coming up on an episode for Avatar The Last Airbender. And basically you sort of debate your opinions. And there's a another person who sort of is the almighty gatekeeper. It's a fun show to watch. Go check it out. I really enjoy that concept. <clears throat> X-rated the X-Men animated review show, which is uh, hitting on all cylinders right now. Typically, they were doing the old X-Men show. They had a little bit of a lull and did some movies. Now they're doing X-Men 97, which is great. There's the Live Long and Podcast show, which is a Star Trek podcast. Hold Up, a movie podcast, is uh, kind of our sister podcast, but they do three movies in two hours, where we do one movie in like four to seven hours. (laughs) Uh, on Track. Emon on Track. I was (laughs) corrected recently. Uh, it's a it's a music podcast. I would like to go on it, and of course, hey, did you see this one? The show you're watching right now, um, and I think that's everything. So, uh, outro. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. Big Vader. <laughs> outro, uh, and then thanks for watching and then the united federation of podcasts sting and we'll get out of here so what you're telling me to do are you telling me to end the show thank you sam uh we'll have you back real soon uh yeah let's bye bye Oh no, it's that guy again. It's a leather skin guy. Oh my. It's a leather skin Rick. This thing, this guy, we told, we asked him to leave and he just keeps on showing up. We say, Ooh. get out of here. And he says, Ooh. he aged into a fine handbag. A fine handbag. <laughs>